recording. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. The time is now 7.06 PM. Uh, I am officially calling this meeting to order. I want to thank everyone for joining us this evening. My name is Fred Baptiste. I currently serve as the chair of Brooklyn Community Board 9. Um, I welcome everyone. I hope everyone is safe. Uh, I hope everyone has had a very blessed and uh, happy holiday season. Um, and uh, we are looking forward to a very productive meeting. Uh, I say in advance, we do have a lot to cover on our agenda, so we just need to make sure that we are very um, efficient and, and, and uh, with our time in terms of making sure that we're, we're hitting the points, but also making sure that we're respecting all members and making sure that we are able to, to get the input from everyone as necessary. Um, so uh, we're going to waive the reading of the rules of conduct. The rules of conduct are available on the CB9 website. Uh, I suffice it to say that this is a place where we come, where we have dialogue, we have conversation, and the goal is to be able to develop solutions in the best interest of our district and our community. Uh, so we come together in that spirit, and I just ask for everyone to respect that, to make sure that we uh, respect the speakers um, and that we respect their viewpoints as well. Uh, additionally, for housekeeping items, for those of you who are on, if you have, uh, for the, the WebEx platform, if you wish to mute or unmute yourself, um, there should be an icon uh, on, your, on your panel where you can do so. If not, you can hit the control M function and that will help mute and unmute yourself. That's the toggle function. Uh, same thing for raising hands. If you are to raise your hands, there is a raise hand. If you go uh, a raise hand icon, if you raise that, if you press that once, it'll raise your hand. When you are finished speaking, please press it again to lower your hand as well. So that way we know that uh, you've completed your, your, your commentary. Um, if you have called in at the appropriate time, if you have wish to raise your hands for a question, um, you'll use the star three function. If you are calling in star three, when you do so, when we recognize you, um, the district staff will um, give you a prompt at which time, uh, please listen for the prompt to hit star six to unmute yourself and you'll be able to speak before the board. So star six is going to be that, but do not use that function before you hear the prompt uh, on, on, the, on the WebEx uh, application. Okay, so with that, we are now going to go on to the next item of our presentation, uh, which is presentations. Uh, first, we have uh, Prospect Park Alliance, uh, the Vail. Do we have a representative from the Prospect Park Alliance to speak on the Vail? Yeah, yeah, hi, this is Deborah Kirshner with Prospect Park Alliance. Hello, Deborah. Welcome, Hello. Um, and you have the floor. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to share my screen, um, so bear with me for one minute. Um, I do want to be respectful of time, and I know that um, Dante circulated um, links to the presentation in advance, so I'm going to kind of quickly take it, people through it, and then if people have questions, happy to answer questions. Um, so, as you may know, um, the city has allocated funding for the restoration of a landscape that we call the Vale. It is located in the northeast corner of the park along Flatbush um, from Grand Army Plaza to just north of the zoo. Um, it's an important landscape to the Alliance. It's really a gateway for the park um, for communities that are east of the park. Um, and it's an area that has not been restored in over 50 years. So just giving a little history to the site, um, when the park first opened, it was a children's area. It had a carousel and a playground and a children's pool where kids could float little boats. Um, at the turn of the century, it became a formal rose garden. It preceded the Brooklyn Botanic Garden um, with flower beds and, and, and decorative fountains. Um, that went in decline over the decades and in 1969, the city took out the flower beds and put in some decorative fountains that unfortunately only worked for a brief period of time. So today, when you go to the landscape, the Alliance maintains it, uh, but it hasn't had any capital improvements. So there's some empty concrete basins that take up a large um, area of the space. It's also a bit overgrown with plantings, which makes it a little bit more secluded, um, which is both a positive aspect and that it feels very green and, and woodland. Um, but also there is um, concerns about safety and security in the area from um, some community members. So we've been doing a lot of improvements in that area. We've been trying to tackle that area um, over the past decade. Um, we recently restored the Flatbush Avenue perimeter. We're about to start construction later this year on the Grand Army Plaza Arch. Um, we recently restored the woodlands and we created new entrances to the area, the first new entrances to the park since the 1940s. 
So as far as where we are in the process, um, we really began thinking about the design and the renovation of this area in 2013, 2014. Um, in 2017-18, we did a very extensive community outreach effort to try to get ideas for the area, what people would love to see in the area. Um, and then once we did that, um, we kind of came up with a vision for the um, project, which I'm going to share with you tonight. And with that, we <clears throat> went to the city to see if the city would help to fund this project. So right now, we're going back to the community to share this vision prior to starting design. Um, we hope to kick off design in the next coming months and in the fall, we should have a design that we bring through the public review process. Um, the idea is to um, hopefully go into construction on the veil vale in, in 2025 and have it open to the public in 2026. So, as I said, we did a lot of community outreach. We engaged over 2000 community members. This map shows the areas where we engage community and you can see there was a lot in PLG. Um, as well as Flatbush, Ditmas, um, and some in Windsor Terrace Park Slope. So the communities around the park um, and really did a lot of activities and events over a two year period to get people's ideas for the area. Um, what we mainly heard back is people really loved the bucolic nature of the space. They really wanted us to preserve and enhance the space as a kind of area for reflection and nature. They love the idea of bringing in amenities that would bring together people of different generations, and they wanted us to add more amenities to make it more comfortable and welcoming to the community. So, what we ended up doing is treating the area as like four different landscapes. So, as you'll see in this map, there's an area called the children's pool. That's a historic structure. That's going to be a pretty straightforward restoration. The 3 circles you see to the right of it along Flatbush. Those are areas where we can really create new amenities for the public and we're sort of treating them as 3 adjacent and, and connected landscapes. So, the pool, like I said, the children's pool is a historic structure, straightforward restoration. This is just a, re a rendering of the area. Um, the new areas that we're really excited about um, 1 space. We're looking to create a pollinator garden um, that would have beautiful plants and flowers to attract uh, birds and bees and butterflies and would have a rustic arbor. So a sheltered space for quiet sitting and reflection and conversation. Um, we are then looking to take a second area and create a playground for children. That's a natural play area. So instead of a typical swings or slides, they would have different types of structures made of stone and wood um, that would really like inspire their imagination. And then on the last area, we wanted to create a natural seating area. So a lawn with some stone seating that could be used for picnicking or small performances. Um, and then to create a building that would have comfort stations. It would have restrooms. There are no restrooms within a 10 minute walk of this area. And we were also looking for some type of flexible space for the community um, for birthday parties and picnics. It would be something that you would be able to secure for like a $25 permit, similar to like the Concert Grove Pavilion or the Peristyle, which are very popular in the park. So those are the main plans um, for this area. So it's four different connected restoration projects. One, a really straightforward traditional preservation project and three new amenities that we're adding to the area to make it more welcoming and accessible to the community. Um, we have an online form where the public can provide feedback, um, which is located at prospectpark.org slash veil. Um, you can also email me and my colleague Alexis McKenzie, who's on this call at community at prospectpark.com uh, dot org. And again, just really trying to hear back from the community if this vision really reflects what they want, if there's amenities that people would like to see um, brought to the space or things we haven't thought of. Um, but again, this really reflects all the outreach we did in 2017-18 um, and the ideas that were sparked during that effort. So, um, depending on how the chair wants to proceed, I'm happy to answer any questions from the community. It's completely up to you and your time. <laughs> yeah, we're a little bit time constrained. Uh, okay. We can take 2 questions though. We can take 2. Uh, so, please use the raise hand function. If you have a question. Okay, I'm not seeing uh, and again to use the raise hand function. Okay. Board member uh, Kyrie Eleni. Yes. Kyrie Eleni. Okay. Um, 
All right, and if you are a caller, if you're on the phone, if you hit star three, that'll enable the raise hand function for you as well. Uh, we'll take a uh, member uh, Kyrie, Aline, go ahead. Well, first and foremost, good afternoon, everyone, and um, hope that everyone is having a great day. Uh, I'm personally um, interested in this. I'm very familiar with the Prospect Park Alliance, and I just have a question in terms of the planning. So the, the polling and the different plans and the designs were drawn up back in 2017, 2018, but we all know that the world was struck with the pandemic and that we've been all, you know, fighting through and living through. So I wanted to know, are there going to be any designs that reflect uh, the current state in which community, our community in Brooklyn is in and or if not, will there be any type of um, additions or amendments to the current design to be COVID friendly or pandemic friendly? That's such a great um, question. I think we've always envisioned that this space is not a space for large gatherings or for really high active like concerts or events that would bring like tons of people together in crowds. Like we always have seen this as a more quiet reflective space that's really more for passive recreation like one on one conversations, small cultural gatherings and picnics. So we definitely are designing it to keep that sort of reflective nature to it. Um, and we want it to be welcoming and accessible and for people to feel safe and comfortable coming there, but we're not gonna be programming it in a way that would draw like huge crowds. That's not really the intention of this space. Um, I would say something that we have heard coming out of the pandemic is people do really like this idea of having spaces that are a bit quieter, more reflective. I think people really take inspiration from the park, especially in these times and want to kind of recharge their batteries and reconnect with nature. So we're hoping that the um, project will really kind of take that momentum of what we've seen the public want and just bring it forward. I hope that answers your question. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Dante, are there any members of the public who uh, raised their hand or, you know? Yes, uh, Maxine Barnes had her hand raised. Um, Nicola Cox also had their, her hand okay. raised and then Martina Victoria. Okay, we're only able to take two questions just because we have a limited time tonight. So we will take, uh, who's that, was that Maxine Barnes? Yeah, I believe, yeah, Maxine was the first we, one that I saw. We can, take, we can take Ms. Barnes' question then. All right, I'm gonna promote. Now. Hello? Yes. Good we evening, community. You. Yes, it's very nice to hear that we are um, considering and bringing the underserved portion of community, of this community, community board nine, the east side of the park. It's very, it's very nice and I relish the thought. Uh, my question is, how did you contact the community? How was this outreach done in 2017, 18? These plans and the outreach, I hadn't heard anything about it. And um, it sounds like a wonderful idea. The second question is the $25 permit. How do you determine who gets to utilize this space for community indoor outdoor space. Also, I got the website of uh, one of them, but I missed one. One is community at Prospect Park, and I didn't get the rest. You moved it too quickly. And the other one was prospectpark.org front slash veil. Yes, I'm sorry. I just moved this because I wanted to be able to answer your question and show you what we did in 2017, 18. Like, uh, clearly we couldn't hit everyone. We, we did our best to do that. Um, we had about 40 different events. We also did an online survey that we pushed out through our digital channels. So we did everything from like large open houses at the Prospect Park Boathouse to one on one meetings with different civic groups. We showed up at block parties and street fairs and we did tabling. We did that also in the park. So we tried to connect with the community in like in a multitude of different ways. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't hit everyone and we do regret there are people who weren't able to be a part of this. Um, that is part of why we're sort of presenting this vision back to the community to see if we're, we heard people right and if this, this is appealing, if the ideas um, really resonate. 
Um, as far as how to get in touch with the Alliance. So, if you go to prospectpark.org slash mail, you'll see a link to an online feedback form that you can fill out, but you can also email us. So, it's community at prospectpark.org. Okay, yes, yeah, so I have it down. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much. And what about right, the $25 uh, arm permit? Oh, sorry. Yes, let me quickly say that. We, we haven't officially decided, but we'll follow something along the lines of the Parks Department permit process. So basically the way it works is they have an online form. It's first come, first served. It's the way that anybody secures a permit to have any type of gathering in the park. So it's really open to all. It's accessible, first come, first serve. It's the city policy. Um, so that that is how we would do permitting if the space is permitted. The other alternative might be that it's just open um, and people are able to just use it, um, similar to like our barbecue areas with the picnic tables. Um, so that's something we'd have to kind of think a little bit more on. But whatever the process is, it will be open and accessible and equitable to all community members. Okay. Ms. Churchner, thank you very much. Actually, I do have one last question. So with respect to the uh, the feedback form, I see April 2022. When does that form officially close? Yeah, we are actually, we've been doing outreach since March 15th. So we are planning to close it soon, but that doesn't mean we can't still get feedback from the community. They are going to start embarking on the actual design work in the coming few weeks, um, but it is a, you know, six month period. Um, so we've um, been promoting out the plan since mid-March. We had exhibits um, at the library and at the armory and at Lakeside. Um, we had a big workshop in mid-March. So we are, we are wrapping up. This is sort of the tail end of our outreach now. Um, and we'll probably be closing the form within the next week. So. Okay. No, thank you for that. So, um, so for those members of the, the community, so the forum closes. Um, Dante, you and the team can make sure that that's available on the website or we can put it as part of the blast. All right, so we'll make that form available. And again, the contact information, you can reach out directly as well if you have any other questions uh, to the email that's provided on that. Uh, yeah. So we'll have that information and uh, you know, we'll provide contact for the, the Process Park Alliance as well. Okay, thank you so much. We really appreciate you making the time for us to meet with you. Thank you very much. Let me thank stop sharing much, my please. screen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, we are going to go on to the next presentation in our, in our in the agenda. So this evening, Community Board 9 will be considering a request for co-naming for the southwest corner of Eastern Parkway and Utica Avenue uh, for Utah's Pier. Uh, so we have um, a representative of the family who is here today who is going to present for the board. Um, do we have, uh, is, it, is, it, is it Sheena or, or Shana, but not? Sheena. Sheena. Okay. All right. So, Ms. Benat, uh, you have the floor. Uh, please tell us a little bit about the, the coding and the applications. Um, if we could, uh, if we could ask if you could keep the, just because for time, just be conscious of time. Okay, sure. Um, yeah, I just want to thank you for having us on and for uh, considering our request. Um, we all felt very, you know, felt very, it was promising last meeting when everyone unanimously, unanimously agreed uh, to our request um, because everyone's here just uh, wants to support Erd. Erd was the type of person who supported everybody. He was always there for people. He always had such good advice. He was just a great person. So everyone after his death, as shocking as it is, as uh, painful as it's been, we're just trying to really bring the community together and uplift his um, his memory. So um, we feel like uh, co-naming Eastern Parkway in Utica where he grew up his whole life and you know ultimately even was killed there. Um, just would be promising, um, would just be a way to show that the community cares and values life and understands that mental health is a serious issue. Um, finding ways to reform police response to people with mental health and just everyone in general, where it's not like um, everyone is being approached as a criminal, you know, like um, having social workers and um, EMTs, you know, everyone working together, that's what community is. And I feel like um, uh, this co-naming will be uh, a great sign of that. 
and of everything that we're trying to do moving forward. Um, if I could share my screen quickly, I'm not sure if you're aware that we do have a petition uh, where we're planning on having a law named after ERD, uh, where hopefully it will um, change response to police. And we've had um, a lot of people supporting it. We're approaching 16,000 signatures. Um, and just a couple of weeks ago, the city also says that they're expanding a pilot program that they had where social workers and EMTs are responding to um, mental health um, individuals instead of police. So we feel like just, you know, continuing this movement and going forward, the community supporting us, you supporting our request, it, it, it'll just be uh, just a great sign of things to come and for real change. So thank you. Did you, did you still, you had a, you said you had a screen share? You wanted to, to share a screen or? Yeah, I just wanted to, again, uh, if people weren't uh, familiar with ERD, just, you know, it's always nice to kind of see who we're talking about. And most people as soon um, as they see ERD's pictures and, you know, his art and his music and stuff, they kind of feel like they know him. So I'm not uh, really able to do that, I think. You should be able to to share your screen. Um, do you see something like along the bottom um, that says share? It should be there. Oh, okay. Yep. I think it said we'll not be able to record the contents of your screen at it until it is quit. Do I hit quit now? Um, I've never heard that before. Let me try again. Sorry. Yeah, that's fine. And I apologize. How do you pronounce the first name again? I, I, I apologize for butchering it the first time. No, that's fine. It's Sheena. Yeah. Oh, no, no. I mean, I meant for, was, is Erd Pierre? Erd? Yes, Erd. It's Erd. Thank you for asking. Um, my, my aunt is always telling us a story about when someone messed up Erd's name when he was like three and he made sure to tell them, my name is Erd Pierre. <laughs> so uh, he, he was very proud of his name. <laughs> it's very unique. Yeah, for some reason I'm not able to share my screen. But um, okay. Yeah. No sorry. problem. But I, we did receive a package with all the materials, so yes. the board actually did send 104 the pages worth of documents um, uh, that we felt like you know really um, encompasses everything that we're trying to do and our justice for earth movement. So. Understood. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, so that's the conclusion of the presentation. We'll be discussing that um, as part of the public session. I'm sorry, the business session. But uh, at this time, if there are any questions, we will. You know, if we if you're up to, we can take two questions for uh, for Ms. Banat. I have a statement. I'm the attorney for the estate, and I wanted to make clear something with regard to this co-naming. Okay. If I can be heard. Okay. Yes, we can. This is Sam, attorney for the state of Earth Pierre. Uh, this co-naming on, on behalf of an individual who died under infamous circumstances, a mentally ill individual killed in a confrontation with the NYPD, demonstrates the need for mental health person, personnel to interact with police when they're dealing with mentally ill persons. I understand that in Brooklyn, as a matter of fact, today, an allocation of resources to do just that uh, has been made. But this street naming will focus on the issue, namely the need for mental health personnel to interact with police when interacting with mentally ill people. And we hope the street sign and the co-naming uh, will lead to awareness and the importance uh, with regard to this. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Rubensen. Um, okay, so we will take two quick questions. Uh, okay, I do see Rabbi so, Berman. Yeah, Rabbi Berman, yes. Okay, are there any other questions? Uh, anybody, any of the participants? The attendees, I should say? Okay, let me check the attendees. Um, I, I believe that the attendees' hands were raised for the previous um, presenter for Prospect Park. Okay, so let's do this. We'll take Yakov lower if you can. You are you can you administratively lower all the hands? Yeah, that's yeah. We're gonna we're gonna yeah we're gonna do that now. So so lower the hands if you are a participant if you are an attendee and you wish to to ask a question please use the raise hand function. We have to be quick, so the, we'll take the first one that we're able to to, to identify. But use the raise hand function. Which again, if you're on phone, is star three, or use the uh, the, the the raise hand function on your phone. Uh, okay, so Rabbi Berman, go ahead. You have the floor. Thank you very much. First of all, I want to say to the family, I am sorry for your loss. Um, I also want to comment. This really question is to the attorney. 
first of all, as a, somebody, um, my mother, blessed memory, we actually had a street named after her. She was an advocate for people with special needs and disability and mental health issues. I just want to correct you. We don't say today the correct term is somebody struggling with mental illness or somebody who has mental illness. We don't call people mentally ill because people are not defined by the disability. It is the incorrect term, and it's not accepted today to say somebody's mentally ill. Just let, please make note of it. Physiology. Let the record correct my phraseology. Thank you. All right. I would like you to clarify, because my only, listen, I, I, I understand the need and the importance, and I read up, and, you know, the individual here seemed to be a really, really great person who contributed to society. My only question is to the attorney, as I understand you have an ongoing um, case now with the city. Are we in any way taking a position or impacting that case by considering this application? Is there any reason why, it's because it's currently in litigation, we should be more sensitive as a board whether to postpone and wait until after the litigation or this street naming will not have any effect or it's completely irrelevant? I believe there have been other street namings while litigation was underway uh, with regard to matters in which the street was named after someone who died. In this case, uh, what we're doing is acknowledging the need for mental health personnel to interact with those who are sick. And it doesn't in any way take any position with regard to specifically the facts and circumstances of this case. Thank you. Okay. Dante, uh, we can take one question. Who's the first hand you see? Herb from the attendees. Okay, we'll see Herb's question. All right, give me one sec. All right, Herb should be able to ask the question. Hey, hi. Um... I don't really have a question. I just wanted to add to what Shano was saying. Um, Shano was saying, I'm sorry. Um, as a um, community member of the Crown Heights community, I knew Erd. Um, and this is not only just for a street name and just for somebody that was great in the community. This is just a petition for everybody else that was killed in that community with that related, with the same related, um, mental problem and the same response that was given he um er wasn't the first and we just want him to be the last that's all we're looking for and that's all i wanted to say thank you very much for that sir okay um all right so again so the board will be considering the co-naming application as part of our business session um yeah well we'll make a, a recommendation uh, with respect to the application uh, you are more than welcome to to stay through that uh, through the um, you know through the through the board's business if you would like to. Okay. Um, okay. So we are now going to move on uh, to the uh, liquor license applications. Uh, this evening we are going to actually yes. So just as a note, we are going to be considering four applications this evening. Actually, so there are three that are on the agenda that we'll be presenting this evening. We have one application that was left over from last month that was not disposed of. So we'll be voting on that um, during the business session. That application is for Jay Gomez, which is located on Beekman. Um, so we did hear from that uh, party last month. They are not presenting this month, uh, but we will be considering their, their request as part of the business session. Okay, so uh, at this time, I would have called for the chair of public safety, uh, Rabbi Berman. Would you be able to guide us through with uh, respect to the applications before us yes. this evening? I will, can you hear me? Yes. yes, we can hear you. All right. So I, I just want to clarify that I, I spoke to uh, Jen Amaya, and they're coming and presenting this week. Um, this, you know, because of we wanted to, you know, send a, a sound, uh, a, de a delegation there to check out the sound, and we wanted to make sure that there's enough time and all the community members that want to be present are going to be present. So we asked them, and they, they agreed that they're going to postpone till the uh, next month and they were also happy to do that because they want to make sure that it's complete and, and thorough. Um, we have several, as you said, applications. The first application is a uh, 
entity that came last month. Um, it's going to be a restaurant with a full menu, not a standalone bar. It's the second restaurant that the owner owns. Um, we it, it's it's where Irv used to be, and we we voted unanimously last month to support, and we lost quorum before the um, before the full board could vote. So obviously we're asking again that it's not their fault. We should support them. The other um, two applications, one appeared, one did not. But again, I believe, Mia, can you confirm these are both renewals? And they're not required to appear. And because there was no quorum, the board did not, ha did not vote on it. But there is no um, police activity or uh, FDNY activity at location. So we have no objection to the board supporting it. We think that... Uh, we support small businesses in the area, and as long as there's no uh, serious issues, we believe that the, the board should um, support it. But again, it wasn't a formal recommendation because there was no vote because we lacked quorum. Thank you. Okay. Just for clarification, the committee, the committee, okay. And just for clarification, the committee did not have quorum when it considered it this month. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Just wanted to confirm. All right. And the, right, the, the um, last, so who do we have with last month? The board didn't have, but that would that yeah, the committee did have last month for the first entity. Okay, cool. Okay, all right. I believe no, but for the other two, so I see Lakeside Brooklyn uh, LLC, which is a renewal of a liquor, wine, beer, and cider, and Isaiah Forty Five Corp uh, for renewal of liquor, wine, beer, and cider. Is that correct? Those are two that yeah, you uh, considered this month. Correct. Okay. All right, so are representatives from either one of those entities here this evening or? Oh, I do see a hand raised. Um, is it Itai? Itai Shoffman? Yes. I believe that's Lakeside, right? Correct, Prospect Park, yep. Yeah, and Lakeside okay. was present at our committee and they did make a very thorough presentation and a very impressive uh, entity. But again, it's not their fault that we did not have quorum. But uh, they did have a very um, good presentation, and I don't see any reason why to um, not support them. But go ahead. Okay. So, Mr. Schaffman, uh, thank you for coming to Community Board 9 this evening. Uh, okay, so if you would tell us a little bit about your about the establishment, um, we would ask that you please keep your presentation to around two minutes. Will do. Thank you for having us, and thank you, Rabbi Berman. Um, my name is Ty Schaffman. I'm with the LaFrac Center at Lakeside, which is part of the Prospect Park Alliance footprint within Prospect Park. We're a two acre facility on the west side of the park for those who are not familiar. Uh, the facility was opened in December of 2013. Uh, we're here for our biannual every two year uh, liquor renewal for the cafe portion of the facility, which is known as Bluestone Cafe within LaFrac Center. Uh, the facility has multiple skating rinks. We offer roller skating in the summer. We have biking and boating rentals in, in the spring and summer as well, and host a variety of community related events and programming throughout the year uh, for families of all ages um, and diverse. You know, we're very diverse uh, and broad demographic uh, uh, serving the entire neighborhood. Um, and as part of the Prospect Alliance uh, family, uh, serving. Uh, all, all parts of the park as they come for recreational activities that are held at the LaFrac Center. So uh, we're here, we have an indoor and outdoor uh, cafe called Bluestone Cafe, uh, which is open throughout the day. Uh, and, you know, every day that we're open, we're open seven days a week. Um, we have some indoor seating and some outdoor seating available um, and serves mostly family fare during the day when we have a lot of kids and families and then if we have more adult uh, oriented programming at night, whether it be ice hockey, for example, or a roller disco uh, event, uh, more adult oriented fare and beverage. And uh, so that's why we're here tonight to present um, our, our biannual renewal uh, for the service of alcohol at the LaFrac Center. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Schottman. Uh, okay, we can take two questions. Um, we can take two questions, actually. Um, so if you wish to uh, ask a question of this applicant, please raise your hand. Again, if you are on by phone, please use the star three function to raise your hand. 
Okay, Dante, do we have any members who have raised their hand uh, for the question for the applicant? I see um, namely Baptiste's hand raised, but I'm not particularly sure if it's for uh, our applicant or for the prior um, discussion. All right. Uh, Ms. Bap uh, Ms. Baptiste, do you want to mute? Is, do you have a question for this applicant or is that from left over from the last question? That might be left over from the last, uh, the last, uh, the last app. Yeah, I lowered the hand. Okay, with that, I see no new hands. Okay, right. With that, Mr. Shoffman, thank you very much for coming in, uh, speaking with the board this uh, this evening. So we will be considering the application during the business session. Uh, you are more than welcome to stay um, if you would like, and we will be voting on the item. Thank you, Mr. Baptiste. Thank you, Dante. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, do we have? Okay, so this evening, do we have a representative from Isaiah Forty Five Court? I don't see any representative here. Dante, you want to confirm? I don't see any representative. If you could make the call, um, then we would be good. We might have to check for hands and attendees. If they yeah. Call. Okay, if there's a representative for Isaiah 45 court, please use the raise hand function and identify yourself. Or if you've called in, please use star 3 for your raise hand. Nope. Yeah. Okay. All right. Then. I just want to apologize. I have a, a funeral and extended family. I would try to check back in. I, I just, before I go, I just want to say again, my condolences to Shana and her family. I, I think that raising awareness is, is incredibly important and hopefully you will inspire families that are struggling to be strong and um, continue to light up this world. And, and thank you for, for your inspiration and again, condolences. Thank you. And if I could just say thank you for correcting us because we're all in this together you know knowledge is is power so just thank you for you know politely correcting us you know moving because people are people are so much larger than their disability you know right. and, and you know that so yeah thank you so thank you. much all right okay thank you very much okay so we are now going to move on in the agenda we are going to go to public commentary Public comments uh, is the opportunity for the, 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 for the community to, to speak with the board and address any issues or, ask, you know, to address any issues. Uh, public commentary is for exactly 30 minutes. Um, at this time, uh, I asked the district office, uh, do we have anyone who signed up for public commentary? The only person I'm aware that signed up was Ms. Maxine Barnes prior to the meeting. Okay. Um, right, hi, so Chair Baptiste. Hello. This is Naomi um, Baptiste. How are you? How you doing? How you doing, Ms. Baptiste? Uh, we, we called you for a question earlier. Um, yes. Did you, did I'm you, sorry. Did you I, want to do something in public commentary or? Uh, yeah, I'll join. Um, I would love to join. Uh, I'm sorry. We'd we'll love to join the public commentary, please. Okay. We'll add your name if to the list of public commentary. Sure. No problem. Uh, are there, is there anyone okay. else who would like to. Sign up for public commentary at this time. Please use the raise hand function so we can add your name to the speakers list. Uh, and again, for those who are on the phone, if you use uh, star three, that'll use the raise hand and the district office team will identify you uh, and we'll call you uh, for your commentary. Uh, with that being said, the time is now 7.45 p.m. and we are going to begin. Uh, please, uh, Ms. Barnes, you we have will the floor. Move her yes, over. if you could promote Ms. Barnes, please. Thank you. All right, no problem. All right. Good evening again, community. Can you hear me? Yes, we, yes, can. we can hear you. Okay. I, I was just, um, I was wondering what happened to the environmental protection uh, spring fair that was planned in committee. I attended several of the meetings and the attendees agreed that community board nine East is underserved. And that IS 61 would have been an ideal venue to get this under, underserved part of our community involved 
on the community board. What happened? What happened to it? And now I'm seeing a spring fair for June 4th. I'm confused. When did that happen? And, and when did we decide on that? And that is planned for McNair Park. McNair Park, that's Dr. McNair Park, it's across from Clara Barton, they may have changed it, across from the uh, uh, Brooklyn uh, uh, Museum, that triangle. And that audience is not the audience that I don't believe that we should be trying to reach. That audience is tourists. That audience has been served. That's Prospect Park West. Can anyone answer? These questions for me, please. The community wants to know. All right. Is that the the completion of your your commentary, or that is the completion of my commentary and my question? I guess, Fred, uh, Chairman Fred, Your Honor, you could answer it, or I would. I see Chris's hand raised. I he would be more. Uh, inclined and uh, informed, I am at. I'm not sure. I want someone to answer. What happened to the beautiful uh, 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 plans that we had for Spring Festival for this side, East Side Community Board? Now, now it's some Spring Festival well, festival in June, which is the West Side of Community Board Number Nine. This side is underserved, and it's not funny. You know, the community on this side would like to get involved and should be involved with the community board. No, Thank understood. You. Absolutely. Yes, now I'm finished. And, 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 and there have been a number of, very quickly, because uh, there'll be some conver additional conversation. There have been a number of conversations with the board. So um, part of what we were trying to do, the vision is that we were trying to do a large scale, uh, large, you know, uh, vast, you know, more encompassing event that would really bring to uh, to bear some of the resources that are no, available I don't in the district. Know. And on uh, that east, uh, the west side is not the audience. Uh, Ms. Barnes, Ms. Barnes, Ms. Barnes, this is not. This is not. I'm, I'm giving you this, and there will be additional discussion. But you've had your commentary, and I'm answering the question for you. You know, for the benefit of the community. So, with respect to that, the um, the district, uh, the, the the community board is is weighing a larger scale event. So, what we've done is we've asked all the committees. To weigh in on the larger scale event as opposed to doing several smaller scale events. So the idea was that we had asked the, all the committees to uh, contribute those ideas to that larger scale event where we do some of that. So part of that means that, okay, we have to, to look at something that's going to accommodate the scale that we're looking for. So we have to look at different venues, but we will be considering this evening um, the authorization of this large scale event with a number of activities that we've already planned for that. But that's the reason why that, that, event, that specific event you're talking about um, is not happening the way that the committee had discussed. Okay. Um, all right, Ms. Baptiste. Um, good evening to everyone on the call. Um, one of my questions to all the committee members, why was me, myself and Christian, the only two community board members at the pick up crown heights meeting Friday? That's one question. Why was the only two community members from the board there to pick up garbage with different vendors, such as the DEA, such as the um, sanitation, such as the district office there, and myself and only Christian was there, the chair of, um, uh, I don't want to say sanitation. I forgot what you call it, environmental, because I'm a new member. And myself from Parks and Recreation with pickers to pick up garbage. That's number one. Number two, um, I'm just a little, uh, I'm just, it just boggles my mind how many times people come on this line and make complaints about different events and what they don't know. But when it's time to do the work, nobody is around. A lot There's a lot of talking on this panel, and there's no action. So I just want to know, the next time we have a spring event for uh, June 4th, that is correct. But I, I, me as a new member, I would love to see all the people that like to talk and complain put some work in their committee and put their feet on the ground because I didn't see nobody there. And I got pictures to prove it. So if we talking and complaining, 
Could you do me a favor and I'll see you in front of the district office for the next time we have it? Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Baptiste. Okay, I did see Christian Lubo's hand. Uh, who else do we have for the list? Dante. All right, so we have on the list, we have, I see Real, I see Carmen for the board members, that's it. And then for attendees, Martina Victoria, I see Paul Friedman, Friedman, excuse me, um, Shah B, initials, I presume. And then I believe this may be Teresa Westerdahl also has um, her hand raised. And then that is the conclusion of the hands that I see. Okay, so let's try and go through those as quickly as we can. Um, I, okay, uh, let's go next. Uh, Christian, I believe you had your hand up. Public commentary. Sure. C can you hear me okay, Mr. Chair? Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I'll just, I'll be brief. It, I'll just say that it was really nice to meet Naomi in person and it would be great to have a little bit more participation. Uh, I think the CB9 fair is going to be hopefully an opportunity for that. Uh, but it was nice to meet Naomi in person, of course, to see Dante as well. Uh, and I think that, you know, one thing I, I, I left that, that event thinking about for next year in the spring is if we're going to continue to be virtual it might be nice to do a meeting once a quarter in person just so that we can continue to convene and come together and have that in-person engagement collaboration and interaction because i i've been on cb9 now for i guess it's about a year and i had never met naomi in person and it was really nice to to be there with her and to to spend that time together. So just a suggestion that if we're going to be virtual next year, maybe there'd be a space for us to hold meetings in person every third month or something like that. So we can continue with that collaboration. And I I just want to acknowledge as well um Miss Barnes's question about this about the fair, but I think you covered that chair. So I'll I'll end my comments there. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, to you, and just as a very quick point, so with respect to um, virtual meetings, right now we are authorized, and this will be something we'll discuss a little bit, through June. Um, more likely than not, we will be meeting in person by next year. Um, so, I mean, so I think that's something that we'll, we can look forward to. I think, you know, wherever we can, opportunities to do things outside, we'll try and take advantage of those. And those will all be part of the planning process. But those are conversations that are coming up, okay? All right, uh, at this time, I'll see real. Apologies, Jam. that was an erroneous hand raise. You can proceed. No problem. Thank you very much. Uh, Carmen Martinez. Yes, hi, good evening. Um, I just want to share with Naomi that I, as a community board member, uh, did participate in the cleanup. As a matter of fact, my block association, Sterling Street BMW, several of my neighbors did participate. Our task was to clean up Sterling Street from Washington to Nordstrand, which we did, broom, pickers, and everything. Uh, so I just want to make sure that that is noted. So we did participate. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Ms. Martinez. Uh, Martina Victoria? All right, Martina. Nothing. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. <clears throat> okay, great. Good, good evening, everyone. I have a couple of questions. Um, one is, what is the ETA for the distribution of the um, garbage receptacles that were okayed by the board um, to be placed in those allotted areas that um, the EP? Uh, committee had uh, designated. Um, and then also, um, I'm curious what the, um, what um, uh, transpired with 54 Crown Street and 
I think it was back in you February did. that somebody had discussed that there had been a toxic dumping from the um, dry cleaners that had um, had left and dumped their um, toxins in, into 54 Crown Street. Um, and I, I do remember that the board said that they were going to take a look into that and do something about it. And then I never heard anything um, addressed. On that, and and then thirdly, I would like to just say um, that um, that the garage that is just south of um, Sullivan Place on Rogers, um, I don't know what the address is. It's before Empire, but there's guys that are out in front there all the time, and they're <clears throat> I don't care that they're drinking and smoking and. <laughs> but it's the noise level and it goes on until very late at night and it disturbs some of my neighbors so much so that they can't even open their window or they would not be able to hear each other talk. And um, the people, you know, 311 and, you know, and 71st Precinct, have, you know, they've all been notified many times and I'm just wondering I would like to help out in some way, but I don't know what to do. And I'm asking you if you have any suggestions of what to do with this. Okay, uh, taking the last one first with respect to um, that issue. If there is a if it, if that issue, please, uh, I would ask if you could please. Sorry. I would ask if you could please check with uh, Dante if I could refer you to him so that way the district office can get the particulars of that and they can see if they can assist you with that. Uh, working back, going back to the top, trash receptacles. So that that um, recommendation has been given to the board. The board last month considered the recommendations, the other recommendations that were provided by the committee. So those have been adopted. That communication is going out. It should be going out. It should be going out very shortly. But I think there have been some changes even where some of those recommendations are already in effect. But that'll be going out. Uh, now for the trash receptacles that were uh, those, those locations that were approved by the committee, that's still under consideration because part of what we're trying to do is also identify uh, funding sources for those trash cans. Uh, there's going to be some conversation shortly with respect to some budget funding, specifically with the district fair. So um, that's going to have to be a conversation that the uh, the district uh, the community board is going to be having very shortly, uh, which would affect as well in terms of CB9 being able to fund at what levels um, as well. But there'll be some additional conversation that we'll be discussing. Did I miss? There was a point I missed, I think, as well. I think I've got most of them, but if, if I didn't get them all, please just uh, make sure you reach out to Dante. He can get that and we'll get you an answer as well. No, no, no. I'm um, can, uh, you, you had forgotten 54 Crown Street. 54 Crown. I'm not sure. Dante, uh, later on, can you loop back in as part of your district office report? Just get a report on that on 54 Crown. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Dante will address that as part of the district office report. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I heard. Free Friedman, uh, one of the. All right, for public commentary. Yeah, give me one second. All right. Sure. All right, should be in. Hello. Yes, Hello. Mr. Friedman, you have the floor. Okay, uh, my name is Paul Friedman. I'm the president of the Lincoln Road Block Association between Rogers Avenue and Bedford Avenue. Uh, in late June and early July of 2020, alternate side of the street parking regulations and the street sweeping schedules were changed due to the pandemic. On our block, the four day schedule was changed to two days, once on each side of the block. There is now a plan to restore the previous parking regulations and street sweeping schedules. On behalf of the residents on our block, I'm here to say that we do not need this change and we do not want it. There is no compelling reason to return to the previous schedule. We have not seen a difference in the conditions on our block that would call for returning to moving cars four days a week. We are not aware of any survey by the Department of Sanitation that supports this change. We are diligent in keeping our sidewalks, tree pits, catch basins, and curbsides free of litter. 
We do not want the inconvenience of moving parked cars four times a week. We also note that streets in Park Slope have just twice a week alternate side parking. Last Friday, April 22nd, I called the community board to ask if the board has any input regarding this policy. I don't know who I spoke to, but he was completely incorrect in telling me that the board has nothing to say about this. I quote from the New York City 311 portal, you can contact your local community board to request changes to an alternate side parking sign or regulation. Community boards will conduct a public hearing, then vote on any recommendations to sanitation regarding alternate side parking regulations. I also sent an email to Marissa Yanni, community affairs liaison, in the Bureau of Community Affairs and New York City Department of Sanitation. In response, she wrote, you can reach out to your local community board to change the signage on your block to once a week per side. If our community board has not held a public hearing regarding these changes, then the changes must be put on hold until the hearing is held and recommendations are made to the Department of Sanitation. Thank you for your consideration. Okay, thank you, Mr. Friedman, for that. Uh, I'm going to speak with the chair of our Environmental Protection Committee. Uh, that alternate side has been a conversation tangentially, at least. So we'll coordinate to see uh, in terms of you know, yeah. beginning that conversation and seeing how we proceed with that. Okay. But thank you for your time, sir. Okay, uh, moving on. We, uh, I'm sorry, Donnie, you said it was Shah? What was the, the, the... Um, All they had were initials. So um, there's not a full name there, but we'll promote. One second. Yeah. Um... Mr. Chair, is it possible that you get Mr. Friedman information? Yeah. All right. Um, the, the next person should be, and Shah should be able to speak. I just sent them a request to unmute. All right. Hello? Okay. And yes. to the point. Hello? Yes, hello. Yes, hello? Yes, hi, good evening. Uh, I'm sorry, my name was short and it's Shirley Bennett. My name is Shirley Bennett. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Um, I want, I just wanted to comment on my support for Erd Pierre's way. I'm also a family member of Erd Pierre and we just want to, um, you know, make sure everybody knows the importance of why we do want to name that specific corner after Erd. That's actually where he was raised his whole life. That's where he went to church across the street. You know, that whole block on Utica, you know, that's where he would buy food. That's where he played basketball. That's where he hung out with his friends, helped the community. That's where, you know, his mom, his brother, and unfortunately, that's where he tragically was shot. So we also wanted to be kind of a um, um, comforting for his family for, you know, just in a memory of his life and what he did for the community. And also it is about a man, but like we said before, it's about a bigger picture about, you know, um, bringing awareness and bringing um, certain protocols and changing just the way um, the city responds to people like that. And having more resources where the final result is not death and just coming together, even for people to have more information and just know how, if you come into, in, if you come in contact with certain people, just to know how to act. And so I just wanted to say that, and thank you for listening. No, thank you very much for your comment. Okay, uh, we're going to go next. I have uh, Ms. Westerdahl. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, this is Teresa Westerdahl. I'm on the Environmental Protection Committee. I just wanted to uh, ask about the trash cans that we, uh, the new trash cans that are supposed to be placed on uh, corners, different corners in the neighborhood. It doesn't seem like they've been, um, we the request has been put in and accepted and doesn't seem like they're there yet. Um, I'm hoping they get put in. I want to address Maxine Barnes uh, environmental fair that was, uh, we decided to go in with the larger 
committee because they uh, chose a date that was close to our date and it didn't seem to be a good idea to divide up to, to put in together. And I do encourage the board in to have a fair um, in an area that is underserved in our community, not in the, the touristy area. So uh, we were hoping for uh, Jacob and Mark's Park uh, near, I guess it's C1 or uh, Boys and Girls Soccer Club. I know uh, Nicholas had suggested that. And there's also a few other parks that I would hope to bring uh, awareness of the community board and all that we have to offer to uh, underserved areas in the future. Um, and what one more thing that I want to talk about is there at 169 Empire Boulevard, they're doing some construction and um, a couple of my neighbors, well, more than one, several of my neighbors had their, a wall, a brick wall torn down um, and they were supposed to replace it. The Department of Buildings was, it was reported to the Department of Buildings. This is, this is about maybe a year or so ago. And they were the developer, whoever's doing the construction, they were supposed to replace the wall and correct the damage that they did. And um, they sort of did that, but not really. They damaged um, one of my neighbor's garage, Inez Frazier, and they damaged a wall, a 120 year old wall. They tore down their brick wall and they, they sort of have built it back up. They're over there. Now, uh, today I was over there um, with Ms. Frazier. She asked me to help her. And um, they're building a wall to cover up the wall that they damaged. And it's, they put a hole in the corner of her garage and she's had trouble with rats and, you know, the environmental effects that have come into her garage have damaged it and they're supposed to fix it. And they're, they're not, maybe they will. I'm gonna continue to help her, but I thought that should, people should be aware of that on the board. Um, that a, cons a fair amount of damage was done to the wall and it's not replaced properly. And they're gonna put up a building there and you're not gonna be able to see the wall anymore because they're building a wall to cover up the damage. And um, I think she could use some help and support. I'm, I'm doing what I can, but um, that's 169 Empire Boulevard. It's where the funeral home used to be. And they're, they're digging up that site. And I don't know if any environmental um, studies have been done of the earth there. There was uh, some questions about- oh, um, Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Ms. Westerdahl. I have to cut you off here at the three minutes, but just very quickly, okay. um, the trash cans, we, I discussed that before. So there's still conversations around there. Please, uh, if you could, I would ask you to please get in contact with the district office and give them the details of the issues that, uh, with regards to 169. Uh, we want to document that so that way if there's any outreach that needs to be done to any city agencies, we can kind of cover it from there. And please refer, uh, you can feel free to refer any of the neighbors as well. So you can come as a group and we can get all the issues and, and create multiple tickets if we need to. Mm -hmm. Okay. But thank you very much for that. Um, okay, I see Ms. Lewis. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chair. I appreciate that. Um, you're calling on me, that is. Um, so I just wanted to um, bring it to um, our attention. I was, I, well, it was brought to my attention that um, there were some um, community members whose cars were moved um, due to construction and they were not aware of where their cars were. <laughs> now, some may say, hey, at least you didn't get towed, but not knowing where your car is, <laughs> is an interesting situation, I may imagine, um, for those that drive. And so I just wanted to address this. Um, there's been quite a few things that I have not addressed that I, I now must, must, must do so. Um, I was not aware um, that due con to, to construction in our area, that people's cars were literally moved and they were not aware of, of, of the fact that they're, they were just, they, they thought their car was stolen. You know, um, they had to look around the community for where their car was. Um, also, just something to consider, and I, I'm, I'm sure perhaps it's something that has been discussed in our many uh, meetings that we have when it comes to um, construction in our community, but um, something to consider. Um, 
perhaps again, it's already been considered, but to just move this along quickly. Um, sometimes when there's a narrow street and there is construction that's being taken place, um, there'll be a situation where, um, you know, maybe somebody's dropping off packages and, you know, it, it causes some type of commotion with those that are waiting because it's, it's quite narrow. Um, and we have some construction taking place in the community where maybe there's an open slot. So people are moving to maybe the open slot. Um, but then, for example, I was told just recently after came in from vacation, um, when a gentleman was trying to help me with my packages, this is a construction site. To the person helping me with my packages, you know, but he was the cab driver was trying not to obstruct traffic. So that traffic could continue to flow, um, you know, also when construction is taking place and there is a, a time that construction is to take place. Like, for example, if it's a 7 a.m. to a 3 p.m. timing, um, trucks should not be sitting in front of a neighborhood 6 a.m. with engines running, disturbing, um, you know, th those that are still apparently trying to sleep. You know, if if someone has, you know, a permit for 7 a.m., they should be starting at 7 a.m. So it's just a series of um, situations that have been occurring, you know, in our community due to construction and just things that I want us to be able to consider and perhaps put some um, 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 some plans in place when it comes to um, construction in our neighborhood for the consideration of the neighbors. Um, we understand that there are regulations in place through the city uh, for construction. We also know um, it's specific in when you're putting in complaints with 311 as well. Certain complaints go to uh, ETA, certain complaints go regarding the uh, sound. So, like, my understanding is if it's a sound complaint um, that, you know, it's, it's specific to certain things, and it's not necessarily something handled by the police department. So I just wanted to just um, just make, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. that, you know, share that. Um, maybe we okay. can have no. you know, some other meeting another time or something regarding that. No, no, absolutely. Uh, but what I would like for you to do, if I could ask. Mm -hmm. So some of the issues or some of the definitely the, the issues in terms of the towing, if you could give uh, the district office any information with respect to those, those specific instances. Yes, uh, yeah. And definitely some of the other issues you've mentioned. Uh, if you could also send that to the, the district office, we can look at that and we can see if we would refer, refer that back out to, you know, to an appropriate committee if there's a policy issue. Yes, certainly. Thank you, that, so thank you so much. much. And thank you for the time. No, thank you. Okay. Uh, and we're going to close public commentary with uh, Suki Chen. Uh, Suki Chang, I'm sorry. Uh, Suki, I'm sorry. Uh, Suki Chang, we'll close on you. Hi. Um, I just wanted to very briefly respond um, to a couple of the um, issues that were raised um, with respect to alternate side parking. Um, I think the environment committee did discuss this a little bit, but it was really around the fact that the, even the one day a week ASP was not being enforced. So there were cars that had not been moved for months and months. Um, and my understanding, what I've heard a number of times over the past several years is that blocks that wanted to reduce their ASP days um, would have to get the Department of Sanitation to do an inspection and they give you a score and your score has to be above a certain grade, like 94 or above or something like that. And then you get your, your days <laughs> reduced. So it's, it's really worth getting out there and, <laughs> and cleaning up. Um, and, and with respect to the idling, Melanie, there there is an anti-idling law. Trucks are not allowed to idle for more than five minutes in a row. So if you catch them and you film them, there's a fine that starts at $300 up to $2,000. And the person who reports it gets, I, I don't know, like 30% of the fee. And there was a big story in the New York Times about a guy who makes a living off of reporting truck idling. So just so you know. That, that's Jesus, all. I could have made so much over these past two years. That's all I'll say about that. Okay. All right. Uh, no, so those are definitely issues that, that, you know, again, so we'll refer those back out to the committees as well. And those are definitely things that have been discussed. Um, and with respect to that, so if there's information with respect to how to do that, we can have that conversation. We'll talk, I'll talk to the district office and we'll have a conversation with the, 
the appropriate chair as well, and we'll do that. Okay, so with that being said, the time is now 8.16 p.m. Uh, I want to thank everyone for the public commentary. Um, and again, so for those conversations, I would ask if it's, if it's complaint specific, uh, please make sure you direct that information to the district office. Uh, with respect to policy, do that as well, because then we are able to look at the issues and relate those to the appropriate committees. Uh, if it's service issues, uh, the district manager and team are, are perfectly suited and that's their responsibility to be able to address that. The district manager has conversations with um, a district service cabinet, so he's able to speak with agency heads with respect to those. If it's a larger policy question, those things would go through the appropriate committees. Uh, and we can set up a forum either through, um, through the committees or hearings as, as, as necessary, necessitated by, um, by the circumstances. But again, thank you very much for that. We are now going to go on in the agenda to um, acknowledgments. So uh, for acknowledgments, if you are a representative for an official, um, because we are time constrained, I would ask that you please introduce yourselves, keep any comments down to about one minute, please. Thank you. Um, if there are any uh, elected officials with us this evening, welcome, thanks, we love you, and we would ask you to keep it to about two minutes. All right, um, so Dante, sorry, pardon me. I'm trying to keep things tight here. You're fine. Uh, you want to do us? Actually, there's only two hands raised right now for um, elected official uh, and acknowledgements. Right now, we have um, we have Taekwon Coleman, uh, Council Member Joseph's office. We have uh, Raul Rothblatt from Assembly Member Cunningham's office, um, and then there's a caller, uh, Portia Edwards uh, from Senator Myrie's office is on as well. And then a caller three four seven nine seven one has their hand raised. I'm not particularly sure if that's a representative. Yeah. Thank you very much for that, Dante. Okay, so we'll take them in the order that you identified them. So the first representative is against. First representative is Taekwon uh, Coleman from Councilmember Joseph's office. Mr. Coleman, welcome back. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm bringing you greetings on behalf of the council member. Uh, we want to thank everyone who made it out to our cannabis event. Uh, it was held on the 20th. Um, and as always, we're available Monday through Friday, uh, 9 to 5. Our, there's a four-year-old in my screen <laughs> right now. Um, we're available Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, and our district office number is 718-287-8762. Once again, 718-287-8762, and my council cell phone number is 929-496-6341. Once again, 929-496-6341. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Coleman, and please give our best regards to Council Member Joseph. Okay, Dante, next. Next, uh, we have Raul Rothblatt, Assembly Member Cunningham's office. Hi, good evening, everybody. It's uh, wonderful to see everybody getting a voice to speak at uh, CB9 here. Um, I will try to be brief. Our office is uh, up and running now, um, but um, we are finally going to uh, start our first event. Um, we're gonna have an iftar. We're gonna break the Ramadan fast tomorrow in a kosher and halal event, um, and uh, we've gotten a lot of support. I, I know Yaakov got off, but uh, he's been very generous. Uh, it's going to be just outside of CB, CB9 on Nostrand and Park uh, Park Place at Kautar Mosque, uh, and I hope you all join us. It's really lovely to spend time together, and iftar is when you break the daily Ramadan fast, and um, so it's just it's a nice time to, to gather and really, you know, in, in a time of stress and conflict, you know, this is really a chance to have some positivity. Um, uh, we've, of course, uh, everybody up in Albany has been busy with legislative stuff. Um, please follow us. We do have our Facebook and Twitter pages. Uh, we have our social media going. Our office is open. Um, we're, you know, it's all still quite brand new. I finally got my email account yesterday, but uh, we are at the, uh, Diana Richardson's old office at 330 Empire Boulevard. We've been getting a lot of uh, constituent requests, so please come on down and we will do our best to um, to answer your concerns. And um, I'll, uh, if you need our contact information, it should be listed. If CB9, I, I think we still don't have it on the website yet. If you could um, 
list us, that would be, um, that would be great. So again, my name is Raul Rothblatt. I'm the director of community affairs. Thank you all for being here and, uh, and doing all the, all the good work of supporting the community. I will update that information on our website tomorrow. Thank you for letting me know. Thanks. Thank you. Hey. Welcome, Mr. Rothblatt. Thank you very much for coming and please give our best regards to the assembly member. Okay, Dante, next on deck we have. Oh, well, let's go with Portia Edwards, Senator Myrie's office. Let's go with Portia. Good, good, good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it's, it's still morning where I'm at. Um, that's not true. I'm in Brooklyn still. It's, <laughs> that's not true. Um, it's always sunny in Brooklyn. Night, everyone. It's always sunny wherever I am. Um, just wanted to say, uh, welcome, Raul. Uh, great work with you in the past, and it will be great working with you, uh, in uh, the assembly office. So, uh, welcome, welcome. Um, two, uh, just quick updates. We, our office, you guys know our office is open. Our new office hours are from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Thursday. Uh, Fridays, we have staff meetings all day. So, so, uh, we are not open to constituent services. However, the office is open, um, but, you know, we're not taking appointments uh, for any appointments uh, for the office uh, because of COVID. We are still, I believe almost everyone in our office, maybe except one person has caught in COVID uh, at least twice. Uh, and so we are very COVID cautious uh, in our office. And so we take uh, constituent services by appointment, either over the phone. Um, and we are very sparingly in person, unless it's absolute it's an absolute must, which most of the time our seniors need that. And so we um, oblige our seniors to open appointments. Um, the second announcement is that we have uh, tests. We have COVID tests in our office. Um, I think it's in the, the blast already. We have lots and lots and lots and lots of COVID tests in our office. Um, and so if you need a COVID test, uh, we will just stop by the office Monday through uh, Thursday between 10 and 6. Um, if there are any organizations that are on the call that may need, need a larger amount of COVID tests uh, for the organization, please email me so that we can set up a time for you to come and pick up some tests for your organization. My my email is very simple. It's P Edwards, Pedwards, basically, P Edwards at nysenate.gov. Or you can call the office at 718 284 4700. Um, all of our information is usually in the uh, CB9 email blast. Um, if you don't have it, Dante, I'll send it to you again if you don't have it. Um, but thank you guys so much for just being on the call and all of the good work that you guys are doing. Um, Raul, if you can, can you just um, tell us what time your offices are open? Um, I didn't hear that part. Oh, um, yeah, we're still kind of up. Like today I was there basically from uh, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. We're going to try to have uh, weekend hours. Uh, it's still a little bit in flux, but um, we're we're there most of the time right now. So uh, we'll even try to have some weekend hours as well. So we're we're going to try to have extended hours. Uh, but again, I'll, I'll I'll update the um I'll I'll update everybody when it, when things have settled down a bit. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Dante. We have next on deck. Okay, next person was caller three four seven uh, nine seven one. Good night, everybody. This is Karen from the DA's office. I just want to bring greetings. I have one quick announcement. My office is partnershiping with um, the consulate of, of St. Lucia. We are having an immigration forum. So if you know, because of COVID, a lot of things closed down, but it's open now. So we're going to have somebody from the USCIS is going to be there, somebody from the mayor's office. My office will be talking about the U visas, so if you know anybody is having problems and want free um, advice, please let them come to St. Lucia House. The address is 438 East 49th Street between Church and Snyder. My phone number is 718-250-4877. And please come out. It's going to be on Thursday from 6.30 to 9. Free advice. Thanks again. Thank you as always. Uh, 
Are there any other uh, um, representatives or public officials who are with us this evening? Okay, seeing none. I, oh, I'm sorry, Don. Do you saw you saw anybody or? No, I, we're good. Thank you. Okay, seeing none. I want to thank all the representatives who come. Uh, you know, you've been fantastic partners. Your, uh, you know, your elected officials have been fantastic partners, um, and you know, this is what helps us bring about change in the district. Uh, that cooperation between the board, the community, and and the representatives. Um, okay, so with that, we are now concluding our public session. We are now going to open the business session. Is the secretary on? Yes, I am. Okay, Ms. Linda Watson Lord, acting secretary for CB9. If I would ask, would you please call the roll for attendance? Yes, I will. Ari, Ali? I think I saw him. Is he still there? It's okay, yeah. Okay, thank you. Kyrie, are you still Nick here? Yes. Nicholas Amanar? Yeah, where is it? Stuart Malberg? Fred Baptiste? Present. <coughs> Naomi Baptiste? John Beckles? Naomi? I saw her. Right. I didn't hear her. Naomi, you still there? Okay, John Beckles? Present. Yaka? Rabbi Yaka Bortman? He has stepped away. Right. my internet. Mr. Chair, did he? Was he here he earlier? He, he said he was going to come. You, you said he was going to stop. You said he was going to drop off. He was going to try and come back in. So we'll call okay. for him later on. Right on. Warren Burke? Here. Augustine Blackwell? Here. Suki Chang? Here. Merlin, Merlin Dozier? Rosemary Ara, Rosemary Abering? Tessa Hackett Vieira? Here. Bishop Sylvester Hamilton Gonzalez? Sloma Heck? Here. Thank you. Primo Lazana? Here. Thank you. Menana Guti? Francisco Leopold? Here. Melanie Lewis? Present. Matas Langberg? Here. Christian, Christian? Present. Hello. Manaki Margolin? Carmen Martinez? Here. Via Morgan? Patricia Moses? Here. Beverly Newsom? Here. Yakov Pearson? Yankee Pearson. Present. Present. Thank you. Pierce Burke. Per, sorry. Ralph Perk. <laughs> Ralph Per Booms. Here. Thank you. Amy Pinkerton. Uh, Ms. Pinkerton is no longer on the board. Please remove oh. her from the roster. Okay, let me cross out. Miss Rome Perry. Rome Perry. Hold on, hold on. I, I feel like I hear somebody saying something. Yeah, I think I saw her too earlier. I'll come back to her. Yeah. Dexter Roberts. Present. Present. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Police Robertson. Roberts Robertson. Present. Thank you. Present. Thank you. Mary Ro Rollerson Blackett. Melissa Severe? Rashida Sadiq? Here. Thank you. Rashida Skites? Rabbi Sperling? Debbie Timothy? 
present. Gotcha. Yours truly, Evelyn Williams. Lorianne Wolseley. Here. Thank you. And Cheryl Wright. I'm sorry, Miss Perry's having problems unmuting herself, but she's in the meeting. Yeah, I saw her. Cheryl Wright. Okay, Mr. No. Chairman. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Was that uh, Augustine? Were you saying? Were you saying that Udella was having an issue? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, she okay, couldn't so unmute yeah. herself. I just spoke to her. She's on. I can hear all of y'all talking on the phone when I called her, and she answered. But she said she, for some reason she wouldn't unmute. Right, she's there. So, I can see her on, but yeah, she's muted. Okay. I see her on. Okay, Mr. Chairman. All right. All right. If if I could ask, uh, if, would you be able to call those names that you didn't um, that did not that you didn't get a response for? Uh, yes, and before I you can. do that. If you are on the line, please listen for your name to make sure that you are, you are accredited for attendance. If you are on the phone and we did not promote you yet, please use the star three function to raise your hand if you are a member of CB9. So at this point, we can promote you and make sure you're in, uh, in uh, as a participant. All right, I'm sorry, Madam uh, Secretary, please uh, continue with uh, calling no the names you didn't get a response. Mr. Bob Burke. Berlin Dozier. Rosemary Evering, Bishop Hamilton Gonzalez, Ms. Morgan, Manaki Margolin, Mary Rollison Blackie, Melissa Severe, Rashida Skypes, Rabbi Sperling, Mrs. Williams, Cheryl Wright. Hi, this is Stuart Balberg. I'm present. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Mr. President, I've got twenty eight present. 28 members present, mm -hmm. 28 members present. Uh, we have a quorum. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Secretary. For any members of the board, uh, if you did not hear your name called or uh, we didn't, weren't able to record you, please use the raise hand function at some point. We'll try and recognize you and get you promoted in. Um, okay, at this time, we are, now that we've completed roll call, I have one item that we need to amend on the agenda. We would like to amend the agenda um we would like to add um before the chairman's report um uh, a treasurer's report so that will become item e and then the chairman's report will become item f so at this time i'll entertain uh an amendment to, uh a, a motion to amend the the agenda to make those changes so move tessa hackett vera cb9 board member I'll second. Oh, hold on, move by Tessa Hackett Vieira. Who's the second? Uh, Blackwell. Thank you very much. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, unless, uh, is there any objection? Okay, hearing no objection, common consent. Uh, the agenda has been amended uh, to add that new item and renumber. Okay, we are now going to go on to the next item, which is the approval of the March minutes. The March minutes have been forwarded to all the board members. Uh, please, are there any corrections that need to be made to the minutes at this time? Um, Mr. 
Mr. Chair, I just wanted to let you know, I didn't hear my name called for the attendance. Naomi Baptiste, but I am here. I did call you, but I saw you too. Yes, we have, we have you, Ms. Baptiste. I got you. Thank you. Thank you, but I didn't hear you, but thank you so much okay. again. Okay. Um, all right, so I'm sorry. So, yes, for the minutes. Are there any corrections that need to be made to the minutes? Okay, call for a second time. Are there any corrections to be made to the minutes? Okay, hearing no corrections, uh, the minutes will stand as approved with common consent. All right, we are now going to move on to committee reports. The committee reports have been submitted to the board office and already distributed uh, to the board members as part of the package. Um, so I would ask uh, if there are any chairs with committee reports uh, to please make it brief comments or updates or highlights that you wish to bring to the attention of the board, please keep it under one minute. Are there any chairs who wish to, to give any um, updates at this time for materials that otherwise not included on your reports? Hold on one second. I see the chair of education and hold on. Are there any other chairs? So I'm just checking. All right, uh, Melanie, you have the floor. Thank you so much. I am so excited to make our community aware that we will have a Jackie Robinson celebration on this Saturday, April 30th. Can I please share my screen for the flyer really fast? I just wanna be able to do that. So everybody sees what I am talking about and it's coming up, it's coming up. I suppose it's coming up, <laughs> uh, but this Saturday, uh, April 30th from 12 to 4 o'clock p.m., rain or shine at 46 McKeever Place in Brooklyn, New York, 11225. I believe this may be the west side that she was talking about, Ms. Carmen, but it is certainly directly in the community, and we are very excited to be able to do this. It is going to be taking place at the Jackie Robinson School, uh, right at 46 McKeever Place. So we do have Exceed Charter School, Ebbetsfield Middle School, Jackie Robinson School. Uh, we uh, definitely have our partners. We're really excited. Jackie Robinson would be 103 this April. Uh, and so we are preparing to give a special gift to the first 103 people that arrive at the event. And we're just um, really excited to be able to make sure we educate some and reignite the yes you can spirit in our community. Um, Jackie Robinson did so many amazing things than basketball and you'll learn more about them on Saturday. Uh, so there is registration for those of you watching right now. You can begin to register right now to make us aware that you're interested in attending just by clicking on that QR code and you will see this go out as well in the community. So if you're looking right now and you have your phone, you can click on that QR code and be able to register right now. See, we got you. We got you. We got you covered. So thank you so much for this time and space and I will stop sharing. Okay. Thank you very much, Melanie. Thank you. All right. Are there any other, are there any other chairs who have uh, announcements that they wish to make to wish to make very quickly? Okay. Seeing none, we are going to move on in um, the agenda. We're going to go to the district office report. All right. Thank you for that. Give me one second. All right. All right, so thank you, Mr. Chair. So um, with the administrative report, uh, just some notes from the district service cabinet meeting. Uh, the parks department will uh, begin uh, an installation of a, a rainwater tank under Wingate Park. That should start um, in the fall and will be completed uh, in the spring. A similar um, installation 
will also commence um, in the fall at Hamilton Mets um, Park under the basketball courts. Uh, a rainwater tank will be uh, installed uh, there as well. And I'm still waiting to hear back from the Parks Department to confirm on the Mark and Jason's playground. Um, but I do believe that there is going to be uh, some type of construction commencing there uh, in the near future. Uh, once I hear back from Parks Department, I will uh, report uh, to the board. Next, uh, from the District Service Cabinet, uh, we are very fortunate to have uh, a representative from the uh, Department for the Aging. Uh, DIFTA senior centers are now um, at 100% capacity. So, um, seniors can start going to their senior centers. Uh, something that's going to happen, actually, our district service cabinet is next week. Uh, I have already put on the agenda for that uh, to discuss the type of programming uh, that's happening at senior centers. So you will see something come out from the board. Um, I'm trying to get all the information that we can from the senior centers that are in our district. But what we're planning on doing is just sending out a small little one pager of the uh, at least the services uh, that are being provided. Uh, at each uh, senior center in the district. Uh, next, uh, just a quick note, council member Darlene Mealy's office will be moving back to their old office in Crown Heights. Um, so just look out for that. And then um, the home uh, emergency assistance program, HEAP, um, I believe the applications for that end April 29th. So if you know of anyone who may need uh, that assistance, you can have them reach out to the board office. We can help them uh, get an application so they can fill it out, uh, connect them to the appropriate city, uh, the appropriate agencies, um, so they can get that filled out before uh, the deadline. Again, that deadline is uh, April 29th. Next, um, the community board uh, held a day of action in partnership with Council Member Rita Joseph, Council Member Crystal Hudson, State Senator Zelnor Myrie, Assembly Member uh, Cunningham, uh, the District Attorney Eric Gonzalez, the Department of Sanitation, NYC Cleanup Corps, Elite Learners, ACE Programs for the Homeless, Repair the World, the Sterling Street Block Association, the Clarkson Street Block Association. Um, you know, I just wanted to say that I appreciate all of the vendors uh, and all the uh, participants that uh, came out for the day of action uh, on Friday. Uh, we had a, a great turnout. Uh, it was very good to see uh, a couple of board members and I just want to acknowledge them. Thank you, uh, Naomi, who was there, uh, Christian Lebeau, who was there. And I knew that Carmen uh, was, was working and I appreciate her directing uh, the Sterling Street folks uh, to me uh, so they could get signed up. So I want to just say thank you for that. Uh, it was a good event. I have a lot of uh, photos from different organizations. So if you're interested in seeing that, please don't re uh, hesitate to reach out to me. Uh, next, um, we will be partnering, uh, CB9 will be partnering with the Department of Housing Preservation and Development to host, uh, to host a SCREE and possibly a Section 8 event um, at Tivoli Towers. Uh, during during a walkthrough that I had with uh, elected officials at Tivoli Towers, it was mentioned that uh, they will be going through a significant rent increase at Tivoli, and so um, you know we wanted to make sure that uh, the seniors who live in that building, if they're eligible, um, you know they sign up for uh, the SCREE program that is offered uh, by the Department of Housing Preservation and Development, so that their rent is frozen before um, that rent increase um, is set to commence. Uh, also, uh, just last week, um, uh, we also partnered with the Department of Consumer and Worker Protection to hold a virtual worker rights webinar. Um, that webinar covered the New York City uh, paid safe and sick leave law, including new amendments to the New York City uh, third party food vendor service laws. Uh, in particular, uh, new rights for uh, delivery workers. Um, so just with that, uh, you know, if there are any topics that you all uh, as board members and in the community uh, as well, um, you, know, you think that that would be, benef be beneficial um, to the community, please don't hesitate to reach out to the board office with your ideas. Um, you know, using this virtual platform really gives us an opportunity to do um, virtual programming and to connect with people um, in a different fashion. And so we've really seen good turnout uh, from that through those uh, events. Just a couple of other items and then I uh, will be uh, finished with my report. Uh, the DDC uh, construction bullet bulletin should have went out. Uh, I believe I did send it out to you all. Um, bless you. This current week uh, sewer replacement at uh, the intersection of Empire and Franklin Ave. Uh, Franklin Avenue between Empire and Sullivan Place will um, 
will be uh, in effect. So just just be aware if you're uh, driving around the area, uh, some of those streets may be blocked off. Um, and please just if you have that information, forward it to your neighbors uh, so they're aware as well. Also, um, permanent roadway restoration um, uh, will be happening this week at the intersection of Schenectady um, between uh, Empire and Lefferts Avenue. So if you know anyone uh, who lives uh, in, in in that uh, proximity, please don't have don't hesitate to give them the information. They can also reach out to the board office, and we can send them the bulletin. Uh, let's see. The last thing is that the uh, Brooklyn Community Board 14 uh, will be having its annual youth conference uh, on April 27th at the Left Rec Center in Prospect Park. Uh, I know that their district manager had sent an email to me um, asking if there were any volunteers. Uh, if, 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 if there's anyone on the call uh, who's interested in participating with that, if you have the capacity uh, to to help with that, please reach out to us at the board office. I will connect you with Sean Campbell. She's the district manager at CB14, who's putting on um, the youth conference that happens every year. So I can put you in contact with them. Again, that's happening tomorrow. So um, yeah, if you if you're able to participate, uh, don't hesitate to give me a call, and I can connect you um, tomorrow morning uh, with Sean at CB14 for the youth conference. Uh, with that, Chair. Uh, Back to close my report. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we will take a couple of questions for the district manager. Um, just a couple, too. If there are any questions from the from the board. Hey, it's Warren. I have a question. Actually, a comment and a question. Okay. Hi, Dante. Uh, my sure. first question is: Is that how many parks did you apply for? for the community fair yeah so no i appreciate that question uh the community fair idea has been uh, I, I would say in in the air for quite some time uh we did look at uh multiple parks uh obviously uh dr uh ronald mcnair park we also looked at wingate park we looked at prospect park we also looked at the old boys and girls high school park the permit that came back to us um the fastest um and again, I don't work for the parks department, so I can't answer to why that happened, but um, was Ronald McNair. And so uh, after doing a, you know, a, walk, a site visit myself uh, and seeing the capacity of the park, I think that that uh, park will, will be fine for, for the event. And I just want to make it clear that even though that we're having this community fair at Ronald McNair, that doesn't mean that we cannot have events um, on, other, on anywhere in this district. Uh, what I would uh, ask is that uh, individuals who would like to see programming, please, educate, please email the board office. Please email the board office. Um, you know, yes, we're doing an event here, but that does not mean that we cannot do um, any type of programming on the other side of the district. Uh, and I, I look forward to hearing any suggestions, any proposals that come forward. Um, you know, we, we do try. I definitely say on the administrative side and when we do our program, when we try our due diligence uh, in trying to include everyone um, in terms of, uh, you know, who, who who's able to make it to the event and the proximity to uh, um, and the convenience for folks who live here. And so, listen, you know, I'm a human being, we make mistakes, but I, I definitely think that, you know, if there are folks out there uh, who have an interest in certain programming in certain areas of the district, um, send me an email. I will, without a doubt, look at it. I will have a, a, a discussion with the team to see what capacity that we have as an administrative staff. And if we don't have the, uh, the capacity as administrative staff, you know, one of the good things is that we can always reach out to city agencies and, you know, with the, the right push, you know, we can bring programming to certain areas. So, you know, don't just think because it's at one place, it's never going to happen. I've heard um, your, your concerns. Uh, definitely reach out to the board office and we can start those discussions. Thank you. So, in conclusion, um, being part of the executive committee, I know that the board made extensive efforts to have it. I happen to live in the district of Wingate Park, um, but we did not get responses and we did have to make a decision. So, the reason we have Ronald McNair Park is that no one else gave us a permit. Is that correct? Yeah, well, let me make it uh, clear for clarity. When you say uh, no responses, when I checked um, the parks permit uh, site, uh, the permits that we submitted were all 
uh, pending, and then one was approved. Okay. And then once so, that was approved, we yeah. Okay, so Dante, the answer is we applied everywhere ahead of time, and the only one that came through was McNair Park. Correct. That is correct. Okay, thank you. Uh, my second comment is I agree with the person who spoke about uh, the cleanup, because one of the things that have been puzzling me is that we had a lot of static about associated closing. And we, you know, through the board office and New York City Grow, uh, we have a farm stand every Friday. And it just amazes me how no board members are going to that, nor the people who complained. And that's just a statement. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions for the district manager from the board, uh, members of the board? We'll take one more question, if any. Okay, seeing none, thank you very much for, for your report. Uh, at this time, we will, um, yeah, follow the amended agenda and we will have the report from the uh, CB9 treasurer. Dexter, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, all right, so we're prepared to receive your report. Hi, good night to each and every one of you. Um, so I'm here just to give a short report as to um, where we're spending this at and what we have in hands. And I'll be like discussing, I'm um, calling from three um, columns and would be one would be the unit of appropriation, the current modified budget and the year to date expense. Under personal, personal expense services, which is zero zero one. Um, the, there were two hundred and fifteen thousand two hundred and twelve dollars. Yet today expended here, we have one hundred and sixty three thousand four hundred and one dollar and seventy four cents. Under our other than PS operations, which is O two on the unit of appropriation. We have the current modified budget amounted to $46,007. Year to date expenditure, we have 20, we spend like $25,663 year to date expenditure. We have $3,898.98 in income in, and is this en encumbered? And we have 32000 Seven hundred and thirty dollars and ninety cents total. Under unit of um, appropriation for O zero zero three, which is rent and utilities, one hundred and nineteen thousand three hundred and ninety two dollars in rent. Seventy two thousand eight hundred and seven dollars and twenty three cents yet to date expenditure. We have thirty four thousand five hundred and fifty six dollars in um income encumbered. So that's where our budget is as of today. And we still will some of the things um that we would have it still haven't been accounted for based on the fact that we still have expenses in so this budget would be adjusted as we go along. And if Dante wishes to just like modify uh, add a little more to it, I'll be grateful. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much for the report, Mr. Treasurer. Um, Dante, did you have anything you wanted to add in, with respect to that or? Um, no, I think that he did a fine job. I, I, I believe that there's a, a, a question, so I will just wait. Okay, we will take a couple of questions for the Treasurer. Ms. Moses, I see you and hold on. Are there any other questions for the Treasurer? Okay, seeing none other, we'll close on Ms. Moses. Ms. Moses, you have the floor. Uh, yes, <clears throat> I just want to make a statement that when you, when when you present a uh, uh, a report, uh, we should actually be able to see it in writing. Um, we used to get um, copies that went to the board members so that we could actually look at the expenditures ourselves. Um, <clears throat> for someone just to read it. 
that's definitely not good enough for the board. We actually need to look at the expenditures monthly in a report. Written. That's it. No, point take. Okay. No point taken and duly noted, Ms. Moses. Um, okay. No. So, um, but thank you for that question. Thank you uh, very much to the treasurer for the report. Um, and as he said, so we are at that stage as well. So there's definitely going to be a lot of expenditures that are going to be coming down as well, uh, which is actually probably a good segue into the chair's report. Okay. So, uh, all right. So we are now in April or at the end of April, I should say. So we have May and June coming up with respect to the board. Um, and there are a lot of activities that are, we, we are planning that are coming up. So let's see where we start first. Um, okay, so the thing with respect to the district fair, so that's been a topic that we've been discussing for a number of months. We've convened with the chairs of the various committees. They've been referring with their committees as well, and we had uh, asked for them to submit budgets um, uh, and, and, and events, you know, and, and requests for events that they would throw as part of a larger district event. Uh, and to some of the questions that have been asked before, one of the things we wanted to do is one, make sure that as we're, we're entering a season where uh, it's spring, uh, we are starting to see, um, you know, some of the, the, the regulations and the restrictions being relaxed. We understand that people have been in for a while. Uh, we wanted to do something that was a little bit bigger uh, in scope, something that would be enjoyable for the, com uh, the community, something that would make, uh, you know, that would help us to showcase some of the different resources, the activities, the different things that are available in CD9. So the thought process was to go larger as opposed to having several smaller events. Uh, so with respect to that, we had had outreach from the district office team. Uh, we had requested for budgets to be submitted uh, and, and ideas. So we've received that information from the committees. Uh, and I'm very, very happy and proud to say that I think there, this is really promising to be a great, fantastic event. Um, so we have a number, I think, between, you know, we have over 50 vendors that we're already looking at, a number of which we've already confirmed um, is to the process. So one of the, the things that we were considering, and that's part of the reason why we reached out to the committees, we wanted to ascertain what uh, would we need in terms of resources and supplies and, and venue, what would be able to support what we're trying to do. Uh, so with respect to that, so definitely uh, part of that was uh, in terms of what options we were given. Uh, in terms of where, who we got, what, what we got approvals for and what dates. Um, and again, we wanted to make sure that it was going to be a location that was going to be able to support the event that we wanted to have. Um, so definitely happy that we were able to get um, Ronald McNair Park, Dr. Ronald McNair Park. Um, so it's an area where it's definitely enough open space for us to be able to support everything we're doing. Our permit also gives us access to part of the street as well, uh, to, the, uh, the, to the adjacent street, so which means we have access to that. Uh, and we're looking forward to a number of activities, vendors, uh, and different entities that are going to be coming by. So this is going to be a fantastic event, um, you know, that we've planned so far. So we've given the date is scheduled for June, I think it was 4th, correct? June 4th, Dr. Ronald McNair Park. Um, last piece we need to talk is budget. So Dante, do you have a copy of the, uh, the line items that we've identified so far? Would you be able to put that up for the board? Give me one second. Okay. So, with respect to the budget, uh, so we've had uh, the district office team has been working hard as well, uh, getting preliminary quotes for some of the the, the, the items. So, for tables, we have identified we're going to need a lot of them, between fifty to one hundred. Uh, preliminary uh, estimates are coming in at about $1,000. Uh, same for chairs. We're looking at over 100 chairs, uh, $600 so far the quote. Potentially, we're going to need tents for different um, for different idea, uh, things in terms of a logistics tent. Uh, we're looking at, um, you know, offering uh, a rest area for seniors uh, and a number of other different things as well. So we're budgeting at 10 tents right now for 750 uh, Water, we're looking at AV tech support for this. So there's going to have to be uh, microphones speakers, things of that nature. Uh, a DJ, we want to have music, entertainment. Um, we're looking at a portable store, um, you know, portable uh, facilities uh, for a comfort station. Uh, miscellaneous uh, being, um, the costs are also being factored in as well as a van rental. So we're already looking um, 
conservatively at around 7750 uh, as has been budgeted by the office. So we're looking at a roughly 8,000. Um, so the commitment of the office is to try and reduce the cost as wherever we can in terms of bringing it under. Uh, we're also actively engaging, trying to see if we can get co-sponsorships or entities or, or organizations to underwrite certain of the costs. But from a budgeting perspective, we are looking at, we want to make sure that uh, we're, we're cognizant of the fact that if we have to pay for these things, it is going to cost us roughly $8,000 with respect to this. Um, so one of the things that uh, we will, I will be asking as part of my chairman's report is the approval of this district fair um, for the location and date that we specified and with a, a preliminary budget of 8,000 to account for the expenses that we've enumerated right here. Uh, and we'll discuss that and we'll entertain a motion after um, as part of the one of the voting items. Uh, next, if we could, um, Dante, would you be able to put up next the uh, the resolution? Got it. Give me one sec. Absolutely. Okay. Under the category of uh, better late than never, um, last month was Women's History Month. Uh, and in thinking about that, uh, we, we want to, one, as a board, recognize this. Uh, and it only seems appropriate, especially as we have our board, um, I believe over half the members are, are women. Um, we have a significant portion of the executive committee, the leadership, uh, the chairs are women. Um, and, and listen, quite frankly, they, they help us, uh, you know, they, they run the world as, as the Beyonce song goes. <laughs> um, but anyway, in, with respect to that, seriously, though, we did want to, to, uh, put forward this resolution, one, acknowledging, uh, Women's History Month. And we also wanted to acknowledge the, the very, uh, the members of community board nine who help, uh, our community be what it is. So with respect to that, uh, the resolution that has been drafted is whereas women of every race, class, and ethnic background have made historic contributions to the growth and strength of our nation in countless recorded and unrecorded ways, whereas women have played and continue to play a critical economic, cultural, and social role in every sphere of the life of the nation, whereas American women of every race, ethnic class, and ethnic background have served as early leaders in the forefront of every major progressive social change movement, Whereas women have served and continue to serve our country and Brooklyn Community District 9 with distinction, it is therefore resolved that Brooklyn Community Board 9 recognizes and celebrates Women's History Month and the contributions of women everywhere and in our district. It is further resolved that Brooklyn Community Board 9 recognizes the following women for their meritorious service and commitment to the board and to the district. Dante, could you scroll down a little bit? So we have Francisca Leopold, second, who serves as second vice chair and the chair of health and social services. We have Ms. Evelyn Williams, who serves as a member at large on the executive committee. We have Ms. Linda Watson Lord, who is the executive secretary acting. We have Ms. Melanie Lewis, who serves as our chair of education and library. We have Ms. Carmen Martinez, who serves as our transportation committee chair. We have Ms. Patricia Moses, who serves as uh, the ULERP land use committee chair. We have Ms. Beverly Newsom, serving as housing committee chair. We have Ms. Naomi Baptiste as members, Ms. Augustine Blackwell, Ms. Suki Chung, Ms. Verlene Dozier, Ms. Rosemary Evering, Ms. Tessa hackett Vieira, Bishop Silve uh, Silvetta Hamilton-Gonzalez, Mina Lagut, Vivian Morgan, Amy, uh, Amy Pinkerton, uh, Yunella Ron Perry, Felice Robertson, Mary Rollison Blackett. Could you scroll down a little bit, please? Excellent. I want to make sure I get everybody. Yeah, that's that's the end of it. That's, Are you oh, okay? Say? No, there should be a little bit more. Okay, but well, let me continue. Uh, we have a uh, sorry. Let's try that. And scroll down some more. No, that that's the end of it. Because uh, I can't see the bottom of your page. Well, let me see if I can zoom it out. Or zoom uh, it Melissa Sabir, Rashida Siddiqui. Uh, Rashida Sykes, Sykes, Rashida Sykes, Gabby Timothy, Debbie Timothy Lorraine, Lorraine Wolfley, Cheryl Wright, right. and Mia Hilton. And Mia Hilton. Serving Hilton. as our assistant district manager. Yes, got it. Okay, so that is the resolution that is before the board. Uh, we will also vote on that as one of our voting items. 
Um, and then the last item I have is, well, actually, one other point of information as well. It was, uh, it was uh, asked as part of, um, it was asked before, with respect to virtual meetings. So the governor, well, as part of the budget process, they passed legislation where the uh, virtual meetings have been extended. Uh, they've been extended through June 8th. And there is a process right now where they are considering how to, con um, to, to include virtual meetings as an option available to community boards. So they are not guaranteed. They are still working out how that looks and under what conditions we would be allowed to use it. But it is something that we are looking at. We are at least um, uh, authorized to use it through the June. By the June meeting, there will be determination uh, in terms of how we're proceeding with that, I'm assuming. Um, so with respect to that, we're looking into things. We, we're also making recommendations. This is a conversation that's happening uh, on, on the borough level as well, uh, along with the state in terms of making recommendations, uh, in terms of how can we do something or how can we create hybrid structures which incorporate the best of both worlds. Uh, I miss seeing uh, a lot of you, well, all of you actually. I miss seeing all of you. Uh, and, you know, and it's great when we get a chance to come together uh, and conduct the business, but even those moments where it's like we just have that, that human contact where we can see each other. Uh, also understanding there are certain efficiencies by being able to do it electronically as well, uh, where we give access to those who may not be able to make it to certain locations. So we're trying to take the best of, of, of all worlds and see what we can come up with in terms of the solution for that. Uh, but we'll have additional information as we do that. Uh, the last item I have, um, we are now at that point uh, in the, in the um, board year uh, where we are entering into election season. Uh, so at this time of the year, um, for our, our uh, CB9 uh, CB bylaws, we are now going to convene a nominations committee, which will be charged with conducting the elections for CB9. Uh, so just so everyone understands, uh, again, because we are not quite sure where we are going to land with respect to virtual meetings, it may be necessary if we're authorized and if conditions warrant, we may be electronic for the June meeting, at which point we would pass an amendment to the bylaws where we would also one, authorize the June meeting and two, authorize electronic uh, balloting. Um, so that may be something we need to consider. We'll have hopefully additional information as we get closer to that. Um, but at this time we would uh, actually impanel a, a nominations committee, which would be responsible for conducting the meeting. Uh, conducting the elections. Uh, per our elections, the nominations media, uh, committee is impaneled as of this month. They will meet over the course of the next month and actually come up with a slate of candidates of people who are interested in running. Uh, all positions are open. All positions are open. So and, uh, anyone of the member of the board in good standing can run for any position uh, on the executive committee. Um, So I guess the last point I have with that is uh, we have not uh, formulated the committee at this time. I will take, um, I, you know, I will take, you know, if somebody wishes to serve on the committee, I will take names and we can impanel the, we will impanel the committee this evening. So at this time, are there any members of the board who wish to volunteer for the nominations committee? Okay, I would ask you please use the raise hand function. I see CB9 is being shy. I see you, Nella Rome Perry, natural born leader. There we go. Thank you very much, Ms. Rome Perry. Are there any members of the board, uh, any other members of the board? I see Ms. Wolseley. Sorry, Rome Perry. I see Wolseley. Are there any other members of the board who wish to volunteer to serve on the, on the nominations committee? And to be clear as well, serving on the committee does not disqualify you from running for a position as well. You are permitted. This is something we've had a conversation with uh, the Corporation Council. You are not barred from running either. I'll be a volunteer. Subject to certain restrictions. Oh, I heard a, I heard a, I heard I a voice. Who was that? Hey, you know me? Ms. Yeah. Baptiste, thank you very much. And then Kyrie Eleni had, had raised his hand. Yeah, if there's, okay. if there's still an opening and a need, I'll definitely volunteer as well. Absolutely. Ms. Rolene, I have you. Ms. Baptiste? Have, yep. Ms. Baptiste, I have you as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, are there any other members of the board who wish to serve on the nominations? Um, uh, excuse me, Mr. Chair. You'll have the directions yeah. on what the no nominations 
committee consist of? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. So after the meeting, we will convene, you know, we will, we will make sure we convene the meeting of the nominations. We'll talk through the entire process. Uh, we've done this long enough where we have documentation that will help you as well. Thank It'll you so much. Forward, but you will fully support it. No, but thank you. Thank you for volunteering. Okay. Are there any other members of the board who wish to to serve on the nominations committee? We need. I have four names. We need one more. S S Suki did. She raised Suki. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. Perfect. Okay, so Suki, I have you as well. Yeah. So the names I have are Unella Rome Perry, Lorianne Wolseley. I have Naomi Baptiste, Kyrie Aline, and Suki Chan. All you need is five names. Yep. Um, uh, yeah. well, is, is anybody is anybody else interested? You can serve as well, between okay. five to seven members. Oh, anybody I'm else? Warren. I'm Warren? getting I'm getting texts from Vivia Morgan. Uh, she says okay. that she's on the meeting and she'd like to be on the nominating committee. Okay, got her. And there was some person okay, speaking up. before. Warren, a lady. Yeah, Felice, I saw I saw you. Felice, were you interested yeah. in um, serving? Okay, so I have Felice Robertson. It's Robert, okay. Yep. And Ms. Morgan, if you're interested, we can add you as well. We can add Ms. Morgan. Okay. Um, All right, so that... So oh, I'm I, sorry, who else? Oh, uh, Ms. Watson, what were you saying? No, I was about to say then I'll have to um, adjust the attendance if Vivia was there and I didn't hear her say so yes or she couldn't say yes. Okay, well, she communicated with the first vice. So Warren, you're saying she spoke, uh, she communicated with you directly? Yes, she texts me also, Mr. Chair, Tessa Hackett Vera, Ms. Morgan okay. texts me, she's on the call. Okay, she thank you. She must be a caller and I think it's important that any board member who's a caller identify themselves. Yeah. Thank you. Hello, yes, can you hear me? Yes, oh, that, I, that should be her. Oh, yes. can you hear me? Yes. yes, we can hear you now, Vivia. Well, I've been trying to go for half an hour and no one's hearing me. I just don't understand how it's going through all of a sudden. I text Francisca, I text um, your friend, Mr. Chair, I text Warren, I text um, Ted. I don't yeah, but Warren, Vivian, Warren, I'm Warren happy right now. I'm happy right now that everyone has know that I'm on the call. I just wanted, I, I raised my hand, I pressed star three multiple times. I'm just finally, okay, thank you. That's it. I just want to be. Okay. No problem. Yeah, We're just also confirming. So. Yeah. No, no, I'm glad you were able to get oh, through, but just, oh, just can confirm I I'm calling for the public public session. I wanted to say that there's a um, Harriet Hines. She's a longtime community member. She volunteers in the district on different events. She also is a part of the Flatbush um, burial ground um, um, coalition that's going on. She just recently transitioned, and I just wanted to acknowledge that. Um, she, her family is doing a GoFundMe page. So if anyone could make a small donation or a large donation, that would be greatly appreciated. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, but just to confirm thank also, you. so did you want, did you, were you interested in serving on the, the nominations committee? Yes, I, I text Warren. Yes. Okay. No, I just wanted to make sure we had that, that for the record. I got okay. that. Thank All right. you so much. Thank you very much. Okay. All right. So with uh, respect to the nominations committee, we're going to close on those names. The nominations committee consists of Unola Rome Perry, Lorianne Wolseley, Naomi Baptiste, Kyrie Aline, Suki Chang, Felice Robertson, and Vivia Morgan. Okay. So the nomination so committee is. Thank you very much. Uh, and we will contact the members of the committee and, um, and I, I, you know, and walk you through the process in terms of the expectations that, you know, you'd be doing over the next month, uh, two months. All right, and I thank you for uh, all for volunteering. Okay, um, all right, so that concludes uh, my chair's report. 
Uh, well, actually, before I conclude the chair, chair report, I also want to say thank you to all the chairpersons for uh, shepherding the committees uh, throughout this year. I want to thank all the members of the executive committee as well for all the hard work uh, and you know for, for, for making sure you're attending and, and staying plugged into what the committees are up to as well and the oversight function you serve. Uh, are there any questions for me? I can take two of them uh, just in the interest of time. Are there any questions? Gassi, Lorian, right. Wolfley, Naomi. Naomi. Christian LeBeau. That's okay. Are these questions or were these volunteers? Okay, yeah, if, you, if this is to volunteer, um, put your hand down if you can, just to make sure we clear that. Okay. All right, Lorianne lowered her hand. I believe that Naomi's hand is new and Christian's was new as well. Okay, sure, we'll take those two questions and then we'll close and we'll go on to um, the voting items. Okay, uh, Ms. Baptiste. Hey, Mr. Baptiste. Um, the question that I had was in, um, I had sent some pictures, right, from Troy Avenue. Um, did you address that? Or could you address that now? Or could, or do we have to have another meeting on that? I sent some pictures, I emailed some pictures in regards to some property, some things that were being built without permission from the community board. And I just wanted to know um, how would that be addressed? I'm sorry, did you send it to me or did you send it to the board? I sent it to um, the office, I believe. Did I tell you what you had to do to me? I made a mistake. Okay, hold on a all right. I'm not sure. Dante, do you, do you, did you receive the pictures? Do you have anything or? No, I, I believe this is this is about um, what we discussed briefly on Friday, Naomi. Um, if I'm correct, I don't believe that those uh, photos have been shared with the chair yet. But what I can definitely do is apprise him uh, of the information that you sent, and then we can have that discussion. Oh, that'd be perfect. Thank you so much. I oh, just wanted to so we'll take thank you. Absolutely, we'll take that. All right, uh, Christian. Thank you, Chair. One quick question. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, before you continue, hold on one second. If, if we could ask, if, if, you, if you're not speaking, if you could mute your mics just to make sure we're not getting the background noise. Okay, thank you very much. Go ahead, Christian. Thank you, Chair. Christian, you're a little soft. Are you able to move your mic a little closer? Can you hear me better now? Mm, yeah, a little bit better. Yeah, we'll, we'll go for it. Let's see what we can get. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, just a quick question, Chair. Is there anything else that the EP committee can provide in terms of the sanitation letter to finalize that? No, I think it was just some wordsmithing, and I think it's only just to make some adjustments because of the changes that have happened since the, the letter was drafted. But I think otherwise, content wise, you're good. All right, uh, thank you. And then it was really helpful when the district manager showed the budget, proposed budget for the fair. That was super, that was great. Um, going back to what the treasurer read out, it, I don't recall essentially how much money we have left in the budget. And I was wondering if you could clarify that for us, Chair. Sure, uh, Dante, yeah. this time, are you able to give uh, any estimates with regards to budget in terms of what you're looking at? If he gives me 30 seconds, I might be able to assist. Thank you. No problem. Well, I'll tell you what, in the interest of time, let's do this because that's probably going to be something that's going to be worth asking as part of as we uh, consider the motion for the fair. So, you know, let's, let's hold that. We'll answer that question if, we, if, it's, if it's okay with you. That's fine. I can raise it when we get to that point. Okay, thank you very much. So, Dante, if you just spool that up, we'll just have that information. Okay, uh, thank you very much for that. So, there are a couple of action items that we have for the board. Uh, several action items we have for the board this time. Okay, so let's go first. Um, okay, at the executive committee meeting, there was a housing forum um, being conducted by the housing committee that was approved by the exec uh, by the, um, the by the executive committee. Uh, the housing forum is going to be on affordable housing. Um, so, it's going to be a virtual, um, a virtual forum. The date is to be determined, uh, but from the conversation has been already approved by the housing committee and approved by the exec. Uh, at this time, I will entertain a motion 
uh, to adopt the recommendation of the housing committee and uh, have an affordable housing forum date to be determined. So moved. I have it moved by Warren Bush. Second. Second. With armor on, a little bit Second sorry, by Blackwell. Second. Blackwell. Second by Augustine Blackwell. Thank you very much. All right, we're moving properly. Seconded. Are there any questions? Okay, call for a second time. Any questions? Okay, hearing none, uh, we will call the question. Uh, at this time, all members of CB9 who are in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Thank you. All members of CB9 who are opposed to the motion, please state your name for the record so you can be recorded for your, your vote against. I call for the second time. All members of CB9 who are in opposition to the motion, please state your name for the record. What am I doing? Cutting the sound off. Okay, Madam Secretary, please record no, no votes. Are there any members of CB9 at this time who wish to abstain from the motion? Please say your name for the record so we can record you, your abstention. All for a second time. Any members of CB9 who wish to abstain, please state your name for the record. Hearing none, uh, the motion carries. Madam uh, Secretary, please note um, all members voted in the affirmative. So noted, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, we are going to move on in the agenda to. Let's do the Women's History Month resolution. Uh, so the Women's History Month resolution was uh, read to the board. Um, at this time, I'll entertain a motion to adopt the resolution. So moved. Second. Moved by, and who, who makes the motion? Yanella. Perry. Okay, Yanella Rome Perry moves to adopt the resolution. Do I have a second? Second by Blackwell. Second by Augustine Blackwell. Thank you very much. All right, are there any questions? Call for a second time. Are there any questions? Uh, Mr. Balber, yeah. I see your hand up. Do you have a question? Yes, uh, I just want to mention that uh, I'm very proud of that we're going to have and supporting those persons in our board and in general who have contributed uh, to this community and to the betterment of the city. However, as an opponent of, uh, of what you described in the resolution, I was supporting everything that supports progressive, uh, progressive reform. Uh, even though I'm an opponent of that, I'm, I'm going to hold, hold my breath and vote yes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ms. Melberg. Okay. <laughs> All right. Are there any other questions? Seeing none, we're going to have the vote. Uh, I would ask all members of CB9 in favor of uh, the motion to approve the resolution, please say aye. 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 Oh, thank you. Are there any members in opposition? Please state your name for the record. Please unmute and state your name for the record. I call for a second time. Are there any members of CB9 who wish to vote no? Please unmute and state your name for the record. Madam Secretary, please record no, no votes. Sorry, um, are, there any, are there any members who wish to abstain for the record, uh, uh, from, the, from, the, from the vote? Please unmute and state your name for the record. Anyone who wishes to abstain, please state your name for the record. Okay, Madam Secretary, please show no abstentions. Uh, the motion passes unanimous. Okay, thank you very much for that. Uh, we are going to now move on to the fair budget. So the fair, uh, so uh, we are now going to move on to the adoption for the approval of uh, commencing with the fair with a preliminary budget of $8,000. Um, I will entertain a motion to, uh, to approve the fair and approve a preliminary budget of $8,000. I so move that. Yeah, to approve this motion to approve the fair and to go ahead with the budget. I second, I second to Francesca. Okay. 
Okay, so it's moved by Francisco Leopold, seconded by Linda Watson Lord. All right, we'll open the floor. Uh, any discussion? Christian, I do see you. Hold on one second. We're gonna take a speaker's list and then we'll 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 continue. All right. Um do I have any other questions with respect to the uh to the motion? Okay, seeing none, we're gonna close on you. Christian, you're the only one, so we'll close on you. Go ahead. You have the floor. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair. I would I would just love to hear how much money we have in the budget that's uh, <laughs> hasn't been for things. Thank you. Yeah, no, no Thank problem. You. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm ready. So I, I I'm sure it was rather difficult to hear um the treasurer's report earlier, but it was mentioned. So I mean, you might have to do a little addition, but right now in our um, OTPS budget. We have approximately 9,000 ish dollars uh, to work with. Um, if I am looking at that correctly, yes. Right now in our OTPS, we have approximately $9,000 uh, to work with. So right now that that's the um, OTPS for uh, the board office. Uh, the numbers specifically are the same numbers that um, the treasurer had read out uh, earlier, which I have no problem sending uh, sending it out to uh, everyone. Um, but looking at the numbers uh, that were spoken earlier, it looks approximately like nine thousand that we have in our OTPS, and that's that's OTPS is other than personnel services, and that's what we we, we use to do our administrative. Work. Okay, thank you for that. Um... Okay, uh, I do see, you know, I will take a couple more. So I do see Tessa Hackett-Vera, I see Shloma Hecht, Shloma Hecht, and... I, I, see Debbie. Debbie. I see Debbie, yeah, she's raising her hand. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Okay, we will take those three questions. So Tessa Hackett-Vera, yes, Shloma um, Hecht, and Debbie Keith Timothy, and then we close on those. Yes, uh, thank you, Chair Baptiste. Um, the district manager indicated that he was willing to send out um, a written version of the treasurer's report. And so I would uh, respectfully request that he does so to all the board members. Duly noted, thank you very much. Okay, uh, member Hecht. Yeah, quickly, I mean, it, it sounds like you're saying we have uh, about uh, nine, but and you wanna allocate eight for this event. I mean, maybe there's a, you know, a way we can leave a little bit more you know, I, I don't know when the, the new budget comes in, just to have a bigger buffer in the bank. That's all I would say. All right, I think uh, the main thing is, I'll speak to this and Dante, please, uh, you know, follow up with respect to that. Uh, so we had, we had tasked the district office to kind of identify what the costs would be uh, with respect to this. Um, so we're looking at roughly 8,000 Roughly 8,000, I think uh, the number was actually 77 and some change. We rounded up to 8,000, but the commitment is also, we are doing uh, fundraising and we are trying to get underwriting for this as well. So there are a number of sources that we're looking at, trying to see if we can get, um, try to see if we can get people to, 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 to underwrite certain aspects of it, if they're willing to donate. And I would ask for board members as well, if you know of any personal connections or community organizations who are able to assist with any of this as well, uh, we will definitely, you know, we definitely consider giving uh, billing and, and credits where, where appropriate as well in terms of the contributions. Uh, we are also, uh, ident you know, we're also identifying revenue streams where we're trying to see if we can get donations to be tax deductible as well. So we're working on that aspect, but to the question, uh, we're trying to bring the number down as much as we can so that way we don't use all the board's money on that. But we wanted the board to be cognizant of, we may, you know, it may go up to about 8,000, but we are confident we can get the number lower. Okay, uh, and then I see uh, Debbie, Ms. Timothy, I'm sorry about that, yes. Hi, so I just wanted to share a quick analysis about the budget that I did. Um, I mean, the original budget was 381. So if we committed to 307 and 94, then 
that's telling me that we have like 70 something thousand dollars. So I guess yeah. there's money elsewhere. Question. Um, did you account for my salary? Um, I, can, well, I, can, I, would, I would think that it would be included in that committed amount. I can go ahead and tell you if my full salary is committed, the board does not have the number, the, not nearly, not even close to the number that you just explained. Okay, well, that's what I'm coming up with. So, yeah, I hear you. And, you know, I have no reservations. If you want to come to the board office, I have no problem showing you. I do want to make it clear to, to board members is in, in this budgeting process, last year was extremely different, right? I started in March. My full salary yeah. did not did not count against um, the board's uh, budget. Now it it counts in its entirety, um, and yeah, unfortunately, it's a community board. We we just don't have the budgets that we need to you know to fully do the things that we would like. Um, but with that being said, you know I've heard the the uh, request for the um, per se written um, document, and that will definitely without be uh, will, will be provided. Yeah, that's important. Of course. Right. No. Okay. And we respect that. Unfortunately, we have to Excuse close because we do need to move on a number of other items. Warren, Warren, uh, hold on. We, we have to move on Just to this. And that, uh, Debbie was the last one. Very quick. Uh, last year, we had an extra $40,000 from the city council, which we don't have this year. Thank you. Thank you, Warren. Uh, so the district manager and the treasurer have given their numbers. The report will be provided to the board. Uh, if there's extra money in there somewhere, that's always a good thing to have. That's not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, and then that hopefully that would enable us to make some other decisions as well. But going on the conservative side, I would say we budget with the conservative number. And if we find the additional funding afterwards, that's an option or a conversation we can have. But, but I think at least in the interim, the numbers we have in front of us are about 9,000. We're looking at uh, committing about 8,000 to the fair with hopefully that number going down. And we continue from there. Uh, we did say that uh, we're going to cut. Um, we're going to end uh, the speakers list with uh, Ms. Timothy. So at this time, we are going to call the question. Okay. Uh, so all those members of the board in favor of uh, the motion to approve the event with a preliminary budget of eight thousand, please say aye. 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 Uh, any members of the board who wish to vote no to the motion, please state your name for the record. Are there any members of the board who wish to vote no on the motion? Please say no for the, for the record. Sorry. Okay, Madam Secretary. Melanie Lewis is saying no. Okay, thank you very much. Melanie Lewis is voting against. What? I'm All sorry. Right. Did you say my name? No, no, Melanie. Melanie. Melanie Lewis. Oh. I'm sorry. Uh, please note, Melanie Lewis is voting against the motion. Are there any members of the board who wish to abstain? Please state your name for the record. Patricia Moses abstain. Okay, duly noted. Ms. Moses abstains. Tessa Anyone Hackett. Else wish to abstain? Tessa Hackett Vera abstains. Noted. Tessa Hackett Vera abstains. Kyrie Aline also abstains. Kyrie Aline abstains. Lola mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Shloma Hecht abstains. Shloma Hecht abstains. Any other abstentions? Debbie. Debbie Timothy abstains. Any other abstentions? Chris Lubo abstains. Chris Lubo abstains. Police Robinson abstains. Police Robinson abstains. Whose name was that, Mr. Police, that was Felice Robertson. Oh, Felice Robertson. Okay, got it. Yes. Anyone else wish to abstain? Any other members? Okay, calling one last time. Any other members wish to abstain? Okay, that's the final call. Uh, Madam Secretary, if I could ask, could you please give the numbers on the votes? Okay, um, abstentions, let me start with that. There's seven persons, Felice Robertson, Pat Moses, Tessa 
Hackett Vieira, Kyrie Aline, Sloma Heck, Debbie Timothy, and Christian Laborde. One again, one against Melanie Lewis. Hold oh, one minute. Let me tell you who then would be in favor. Then it would be 20 members in favor. Okay, so that's well, 20 I'm in favor. Well, I don't know how many people are here. 20. No, no, I, I know when you call the attendance, but I still don't know how many people left or here. I don't even know if we have. Yes, we do. There was only one person who who had left, and that was uh, Mr. Berman. But and then I add back Vivia, who we didn't hear the first time. So we still at 20. Well, I don't know that you have 20. Very cool. Very cool motion. I'm sorry, what was that? What was that? All right, let's trust the okay. secretary and move on. No, I don't trust yeah. the secretary and move on. I think we need to roll. Okay, call. hold on, hold on. I was about to say that. Let me give a roll call to be on the safe side. Very good. Hi, Kyrie Aline. <coughs> yes, I'm here. Say abstain. Well, well, actually, since you've already, abstain, well, actually, abstain. since you've already called, you've already, yeah. I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry, you've already called those members. You've already heard from those who abstained and who um, voted no. Call the okay. members who are blanked right now. Okay. That'll probably be faster. All right, Nicholas Amanar, Sir Balber, Frank. Uh, yes, sir. Well, let, 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 let them confirm their vote. Let them vote yes. Let them vote yes for the record. Mr. Sir, you said yes, right? Amanar is yes. Yes. Okay. Fred Baptiste, yes. Naomi, ba Naomi Baptiste, John Beckles Jr., Warren Burke, yes. Augustine Blackwell, yes. Suki Shang, yes. Primo Lozano. Yes. Maya Lagote? Yes. Francisco Leopold? Yes. Matthias Lindbergh? Matthias Lindbergh? Okay. Christian Lebeau is abstained. Carmen Martinez? Vivian Morgan? Vivian Morgan? Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, she answered. She yeah. answered. Right. But yeah. Beverly Vivian. Newsom? Yes. Beverly Newsom? Yankee Pearson? Yes. Ryan Pearson? Yes. Real. Right. Okay. Miss Rome Perry? Yes. Dr. De Dr. Roberts? Yes. Rashida Sadiq? Yes. Linda Watson? Yes. Lorianne Wos Wosley? Yes. Okay, go well, one minute. Okay, so I've got 19 for, one against, and seven abstentions. Now, there was somebody I didn't hear. What, uh, could you confirm Mr. Almanor's vote? Because I believe he was one of the first ones and there was some uh, static. Yes, he said, he said yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and eleven. Would the uh, woman be uh, Rabbi Berman? Yeah, but he's not here, and he was so. He I left earlier. He left earlier, so I really that's why he's so. He's not really an extension or an against. He's just an excuse. What do I so I can't put him anywhere? So he's the extra one that couldn't be counted to make the twenty eight. 
right, so you'll have nine pins. So yes. Let's move on. Yes. Yeah. So that's that's a majority that's a majority vote. Right. A majority mm -hmm. vote. Okay. All right, uh, so we have a majority of the board voting in favor. The, the motion uh, carries. The district fair is approved along with the preliminary budget of $8,000. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, we are now going to move on to the street co naming. Uh, so we have the street co naming uh, to rename the co southwest corner of Utica Avenue and Eastern Parkway to Erds Pierre. Um, in, in honor of uh, Erds Pierre, it's been before the transportation committee who voted unanimously to bring it to the board. It was brought to the executive committee who also approved, um, voted in favor of bringing it for the board for consideration. Uh, at this time, I'd ask the transportation committee chair, do you um, have any comments that you wish to make with regards to the, the presentation or to the, the application? Carmen, Carmen. Carmen, are you there? Okay. Well, if she comes back on, we'll allow her a chance Hello? to speak as well on behalf of the committee. Yes, Carmen. Are you? Hello? Uh, yes. Yes, Carmen, we hear you. You call uh, me? So I was just saying, yes. Did you have anything Hello? to add with respect to the recommendation of the committee? Yeah, Carmen? You're mute again. You're mute. Yeah, Carmen, if you can unmute. Okay, well, watch. Okay, there you she, go. Should be, she, she begin now. Carmen. Yes, Carmen. Yes, um, you can yeah. you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay, sorry, my phone. I'm sorry, I didn't hear your question. No, I was saying, so uh, we're right now, we're going to consider the application for the, the street code naming. So I was uh, calling you up. Did you have anything that you wish to, to say with respect to the application and the committee and the transportation committee? Uh, well, the, the, the committee met. Um, we uh, listened to, there must have been 20 uh, or so community members and family in attendance at the meeting. Um, they presented uh, their case for their request. Um, it was after listening to uh, the relatives and friends uh, share their sentiments and share the life story of Mr. Pierre. And I keep referring to him as Mr. Pierre because I don't want to mess up his name, his first name. <laughs> um, it was the consensus and it was a unanimous vote by the um, Transportation Committee to uh, recommend that the board supports the request for the co-naming of the southwest corner of Eastern Parkway and Utica Avenue uh, in honor of Mr. Pierre. Uh, so we uh, we stand by our vote, and I uh, highly recommend that the board uh, honor this young man's life that was cut so short and deprived of making contribution to his community. Thank you, Ms. Martinez. All right, at this time, so you've heard um, the recommendation of the committee. You've also heard from uh, family and, his, uh, and the representative of the estate. Uh, at this time, we will consider a motion to uh, approve the recommendation of the transportation uh, committee. Um, well, we will recommend a motion to approve the, the application for the co-naming. So I move. We have a motion. I'm sorry, and who said that? I have it moved by Augustine. Is that you, Augustine Blackwell? Yeah. No, I would. I would just yes. I have moved, moved by the Augustine motion. Blackwell. Do I have a second? Seconded. And I have a second by Christian Lebeau. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Are there any questions? And I'm just moving my hand. Uh, I do see Ms. Lewis. Um, I see your hand. Was that from previous or? Oh, I'm sorry. I got it. Okay. Oh, okay. oh see your hand back up. Okay. okay, there we go. I do see Tessa Hackett Vieira. Yes. Hold on one um, second. Let me just create. Hold on. Let me create the list first, and then then we'll be able we'll, we'll proceed. 
I see Tessa Hackadiera. Anyone else wish to speak on the motion? Calling the second time. Does anyone wishes to speak on the motion? Okay, Ms. Hackadiera, we're going to take your commentary and we're going to close on you and then we'll vote. Go ahead, Ms. Hackadiera. Yeah, so I was just wondering uh, the southwest corner of Eastern Parkway in Utica. So that would be Erd Pierre's Way, Erd Pierre's Street. Exactly. Well, what's the exact name? To be co named for that corner. I'm not sure it was ever stated. Is okay. Um, as, as other corners that have been co named on Eastern Parkway, uh, it will be Erd's, and I hope I pronounce it right, uh, Pierre's Way. Uh, there's a co naming on North Strain and Eastern Parkway for our council member, uh, James Davis, and as well as Rogers and in our uh, Eastern Parkway. For Reverend Dr. Clarence Norman Sr. and Mrs. Ellen Norman. Okay. So, the so the official name. Way. Yes. Heard your way, correct. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, that was the only question we had. So we will now go to the vote. Uh, Madam Secretary, if I could ask, just a, if you could just please call the roll. Okay. Kyrie Ali? Uh, yes. Nicholas Almanar? Yes. Stuart Balber? Yes. Right, Baptiste? Yes. Naomi Baptiste? Naomi Baptiste? Here, come back. John Beckles Jr.? Warren Burt. Stain. Augustine Blackbell. Yes. Suki Shell. Suki. Okay, I'll come back. Tessa Hackett, fear. Abstain. Sloma Heck. Abstain. Primo Lozano? Yes. Maya Lugute? Yes. Francisco Leopold? Yes. Melanie Lewis? Yes. Matthias Lindbergh? Christian Lebeau? Wholeheartedly, yes. Carmen Martinez? Yes. Vivia Morgan? Can you hear me? Yes. You said yes? Yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. Patricia Moses? Yes. Beverly Newsom? Yes. Yankee Pearson? Yes. Ryan Perisboom? Miss Rome Perry? Yes. Dr. Roberts? Yes. Yes. Felice Robertson? Yes. Ready? What? Rashida Sadiq? Yes. Debbie Top Timothy? Yes. Linda? Yes. And Lorraine Wesley. Wesley. Lorraine, Lorraine Wesley. Yes. Actually, yes. Madam Secretary, if I could ask, can you call? Uh -huh. Could you call one more time for the uh, the the, na the the names that you didn't get didn't get responses for? Okay, Naomi Batiste. Is she still there? I don't see her. 
No, I don't see Naomi right online now. All right, so she is not there. John Beckles Jr. I'm looking at the names. I don't see him either. Anybody see him? I don't see him. I know. I know Jacob is not there. No, he's not. He's not on. Right. Right. Verlin Dozier not there. Miss Rosemary not there. Bishop Gonzalez not there. Hey, hold on. Menaki not there. Melissa Severe, she's not there. Mary Rollison Blackett, she's not there. Rabbi Sperling's not there. Miss Williams, not there. Chara Wright, not there. Okay, so persons that might have started the meeting but not here for this vote, and I'll call those who are not here Miss Baptiste, Mr. Beckles, Mr. Berman, Berlin Dozier, Miss Aberine, Bishop Gonzalez. A six. Menachem Margolin, seven. Mary Rollison Blackett, eight. Melissa Severe, nine. Uh, Rabbi Sperling, ten. Evelyn Williams, eleven. Cheryl Wright, twelve. So that's that's twelve people not voting for or against. Against. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Real, hold on. I heard. Real, real. What was that? Yeah, I did not hear my name call. Yeah. Yeah. Vote yes. Did you say yes? Yes, you voted yes. Right? No, I didn't, but I do know. Thank you. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. I thought you said yes. Right? Linda, did you get my vote? It's Suki. Yes, you did. I got you. I voted yes. Yes, you did. Very, very soft, but I heard. Right? Yes. Uh, now, let Madam me give you. Secretary, Madam huh? Secretary, if I may say, I think that you're counting persons who, are, who are not on the meeting at all. I think right. Yes. Yes. Hold on. Hold on. Concentrate on the persons who are part of the count you had before. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. I understand, Francisco. But for this, I'm saying who were here to to vote for this, not who were here for the whole meeting. So we don't mix it up, right? Against or abstain. Where's Tessa Vera Hackett? Slow my hack. I think I had two two abstentions. Right, everybody else was yes. Okay, so what are the numbers? Right, good. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. Yes. Twenty-four. Yes, and how yes. many knows? No knows. No, how many knows? No, we have two abstentions. Two abstentions. Okay. Stuart Dahlberg voted no. Who? No, I voted yes. No, he didn't. Oh. No, we voted. Don't mix it up. That's why I called everybody because okay. I knew he was going to mix it. Somebody was going to mix it up. Okay. Thank you very much. So 24 yes, no abstentions, uh, no, no no's, and two abstentions is what I'm hearing. That, yes, uh, the motion the carries. I'm sorry, say that again? I said motion carries. Motion carries. Uh, thank you very much. So this will be forwarded over to the uh, the the council member, uh, Crystal Hudson, um, as part of the recommendation from CB9. Um, and on behalf of the board, we, we wish your family, um, you know, God's healing grace and our condolences. I want to extend okay. my congratulations to the family and friends of Mr. Pierre. God blessings. Give his mother our love and support. God bless you guys. God bless you all. And continue to carry his love life in, alive in your heart. Okay. All right. We do have just a couple of items left. We're going to do this very quickly. Uh, so now we have three. Going back momentarily. We have three licenses to consider this evening. No, because one of them was withdrawn. Remember, uh, guy, three, because Guy and Omaya, uh, they, they're postponing. They Correct. will do this for this evening. Thank so we have Lakeside, Brooklyn. At 153 East uh, Drive, it's a renewal of a liquor, wine, beer, and cider license. We have Isaiah 45 Corp at 52 Lincoln Road. It's a renewal of a liquor, wine, beer, and cider license. And we have a matter that we considered last month, but we did not have quorum to vote on for Jay Gomez 
located on Beekman Place. Oh, Jacob Nice for that. Oh, yes. Okay. So there's three right, of so them we'll I've got I've got ready to book. Correct. Uh, I'm trying to remember now. I'm trying to call Dante. Was Jay Gomez? Was that a renewal or was it a new license? Give me one second. It was a new liquor license. That's a new liquor license. <laughs> yes. All right. Um, let's try this. Is there any objection to considering the first two, Lakeside Brooklyn LLC and Isaiah 45, as a joint resolution? Is there any objection? No Those objection. are renewals of licenses. I'm sorry? No objection. All in favor? Well, 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 no, we'll, uh, we'll take the motion. I'm just trying to see if there's any objection because, we, you know, otherwise we'll take them together. Is there any objection to, to considering those uh, jointly as one resolution? Okay, hearing none, I will entertain a motion to uh, approve uh, Lakeside Brooklyn LLC and Isaiah 45 Corporation. I have the motion. I, I heard it moved by Stuart Balberg. Uh, and Tessa, and Tessa did, you, were, did you second? Yes. yes. And a second by Tessa Hackett Vieira. All right, it's been moved and seconded. Uh, any questions? Oh, second time. Any questions? Hearing none. Um, all those in favor of approving the resolution to approve those two application renewals, please say aye. 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 Are they are there any members opposed? Please state your name for the record. Any members opposed? Please state your name for the record. No abstentions. Please record. Uh, I'm sorry. Please record. Uh, nobody. No one voted in the negative. Are there any abstentions? Please state your name for the record. Are there any abstentions? Please unmute and state your name for the record. We hear no abstentions. Madam Secretary, please um, note that the, the vote, uh, the motion carries. Um, all voted in the affirmative. So I'm noted, Mr. President. Okay, so we have the last application for Jay Gomez, which came to the board last month. We were not able to consider because of uh, a loss of quorum. Uh, Dante, could you give us some information with respect to that application? Uh, with respect to that application, uh, I am not aware uh, of any uh, incidents, incidences that came back from the uh, 71st or uh, FDNY. Uh, Khalid, can you confirm? Yes, that's correct. There were no incidents reported from NYPD or FDNY with that location. Thank you. Yes. Okay, so we have the application. They came before the board. They presented. Uh, we had asked, had the opportunity to ask questions as well. Um, it was approved. Well, that, that application was approved by the uh, public safety, correct? That is correct. That application was approved by public safety. Okay, so that application was uh, approved by the public safety committee. Um, at this time, I will entertain a motion to approve the application for the new uh, license. Motion. I'm sorry, state the name who made the motion for the record. Shloma Hecht. Shloma Hecht moves uh, to the, for the, res uh, the motion. Um, do I have a second? Please state your name as well when you make the second. Do Rashida I have a second Sadiq to approve? Seconds. I have a second by Rashida Sadiq, thank you. All right, are there any questions? Hearing none, we're gonna call the question. Uh, all those members of the board in favor of the resolution to of the of the uh, motion to approve, please say aye. 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 Are there any members opposed? Please say state your name for the record. Beverly opposed. Thank you, Ms. Newsom. Uh, please record Ms. Newsom as opposed. Any so other members of the board who wish to vote? I'm sorry. I said so recording. Up. Oh, thank you. Uh, any other members of the board who wish to vote no? Okay, hearing none. Any members of the board who wish to abstain, please state your name for the record. Call for a second time. Any members of the board who wish to abstain, please state your name for the record. Hearing no abstentions, please record that. No abstentions. 
Okay, uh, the motion carries. Hearing a majority, the motion carries. Uh, the motion um, has been approved and we will recommend to approve the State Liquor, Liquor Authority. That is it. completes our voting items. Is there any unfinished business for this board to consider? Actually, there is none because there's nothing we've left on the table. Is there any new business for this board? Yes, I'd like to make a motion that we establish a subcommittee for the district fair to give support to the office staff. Uh, we could have a few people concentrating in locating sponsorship and any other item that will help make this district fair a reality, a real success. Uh, I would ask if we could hold off on that one, actually, because we don't need a motion from the board to do that. We can just establish a subcommittee very easily. That's something within the within the powers of the, the exec. We can do that. But if we have, if you're volunteering, uh, I'll take your name right now. Yes, I am. <laughs> okay, absolutely. Uh, and if there's anyone else who's interested in working on a subcommittee for the the planning and the logistics for this, please contact me or the district office and let us know. And we'll make sure that we include you as part of the communications team. Okay. But thank you very much for that. Uh, and to that point, I just wanted to, to say that yes. Uh, we've heard commentary where this is, you know, it doesn't make sense for the board to approve activities that the board doesn't support. As a board, we voted to to do this, and this promises to be a big activity. So we ask for everyone to please do everything you can to make this successful. To try and clear calendars as, as much as possible to come and attend, and and basically let everyone see what CB9 is all about. Uh, but I thank everyone for your work to this point, and we're looking forward to even bigger and better things. Okay. Um, all right, and with that being said, I will conclude by saying again, thank you to all for all your hard work and your dedication and for doing the things uh, to make this uh, district run. Uh, all of you, I hope you are all safe. I hope uh, you are all well. We wish you all the best and, and, and all the blessings uh, you know, that God can give. Uh, at this time, we will entertain a motion to adjourn. Yes, you have the motion, Shlomo Hecht. Second, Blackwell. I, 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 I heard nine we'll songs. Be nine songs. New we'll check, uh, thank you. 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 Mr. Chair, is Tessa Hackett there? Is it possible to send out the resolution to the women, to all the women on the board? We can do that. that is absolutely, absolutely. Could you mail that out? Could you mail that out to the female board members, please? Yeah. yeah. Maybe absolutely. we should print it out. Maybe we should print it out. Hello, hello, somebody. Yes, could could it could, yeah. could, it, could yeah. be could Dante? Could it be mailed out on pink paper? I was about. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to. Say, you got it all wrong. Could somebody? My son is clear. That wasn't part there. of the original motion. And he will defend it. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a separate budget. Oh, separate. Email the pink paper, Fred. Mr. Chair, I didn't hear your response. Could it be mailed out? Could it be on pink paper? It wasn't part of the original resolution. You know. Okay. So now we got to go to budget committee. We got to see we have pink paper, all kinds of stuff now. Okay. <laughs> all right, regular white paper will do. Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, I could I could volunteer to make it, and it's a very nice um, design for the ladies. Without Madam a Secretary, to look at Madam Secretary is on the. Well, you know the funny thing is, it's actually kind of constant to the thing. We want to honor you, you know, instead of having you. Okay, so, so I'll we'll take care nice. of that for you, Miss. Ba we'll make it nice. We'll right. make it nice, Miss right. Hackenbier. I'll just say this: we will make it nice for you. It'll be something worthy. Thank you very much. Right. Thank you very much. Good, and good night. night, all. Good night, Good night, all. Bye. Good night, Good everyone. Night. Good night. Good night.